I remember when I was 12, my parents and I, we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando. And it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio. But however, it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider. You know, because here as a tourist, we were behind a plexiglass. So that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery. But um, so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time. Because in order to learn, you would have to go to out-of-state um university or a private college or even overseas and it was virtually impossible for me at the time earlier last year or so that i um started to take animation courses and i'm i'm telling you i have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um to this year, I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel, AMB Real Animators um, Training, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe, you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing. It just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics, you know. And when I started on that archive, I started understanding the spacing, the timing the arcs, the um, slow in, the slow out. And with each exercise, it builds up on each other. And as a result, I start s seeing, you know, the arcs. I start understanding and timing things in my head. And it was just so fascinating. And because of that, it just helped revive, you know, my lifelong desire of learning animation. And it just made me so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so today I'm going to be trying something new, something a little bit different. Um, I don't really have the right setup to be drawing traditionally and filming it, um, but I'm, I thought I'd put my webcam above my sketchpad today and do one of my storyboard panels uh, that I'm doing in this storyboard book that I've started for the Groundhopper. Um, and we'll just hang out and you guys can ask questions and we'll chat while I'm drawing. You can see how I draw traditionally. Uh, so you can see uh, one of the reasons I want to do this is that you can see that um, when I draw traditionally, uh, it's very much the same as how I draw digitally and I just want to sp spell out to you guys that it's not really the software that you know what goes on so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a panel um, in the storyboard traditionally uh, and I'll just explain a little bit about what's going on before that I'll say hello to the people in the chat um, because we've got some people and then we'll I'll just jump straight into it and if you as I said if you guys have got any we can just hang out we'll just chat and if you got any questions while I'm drawing because I can't really hello I can't really take the webcam away 
uh, and put it to my face because I've set it up like this so you guys can see me draw traditionally um, it's like um, just literally a little sketch pad in front of my computer I want to try something I want to do something a little bit different today uh, so you we can move over to I notice people are enjoying my traditional drawing posts a lot and to be honest I'm having a lot of fun going back old school doing storyboards the old school way I really encourage people to do storyboards the old school way because it trains your eye to see shots without having to scrub the timeline um, these are not really there for example this would need more more poses if this was going to be an animatic uh, especially on things like this you need to push in more and see the skull a little bit more closer here here he'd have to react and turn before pulling out and walking away and turning his head so more panels would definitely be needed but these are more just like shots uh shots that i'm doing in the sketchbook uh for example he's here he jumps up he sees this what i'm using this side of the sketchbook for um yeah i'll i'm i'll i'll leave this stream up copper star i'll say hello to everybody in a minute but i'm just giving just explaining so i want to get my shots uh, I mean, I'm laboring a little bit over them, but I'm not killing myself over them. They look more detailed than what they actually are. And hopefully you'll see that happen, what I do when I show you some pencils. Uh, I don't talk software, but I talk pencils. I'm using color rays, uh, blue and red. I'm using a putty eraser and a good old schoolboy pencil sharpener. I can't find one of my, you know, I used to get electric pencil sharpeners. It was very therapeutic just finishing a pencil away in them. <laughs> but I can't seem to find a good one here in New Zealand. But that'll do. I don't sharpen my pencil often. I like to work blunt. Um, so hopefully you're all excited about this. We'll see how it goes. We'll, if, if people like these traditional drawing streams, then I'll do more. We'll do like AMB Lady and character and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to keep going with the storyboard so what i'm doing here is, is i'm using this side to do, work out my shots and i'm using this side to you know get an idea for the composition so on the next page you see this skull here it's it's kind of worked out in thumbnail format here this is a pose that i needed to work out for this angle here um, I've got another sketchbook which I take on holiday to me and rough out ideas so the drawings are very poor in this one but uh, it's just like my initial idea so here you can see he's the original idea was you can see in thumbnail format but he's overreacting here he's out of character it's a nice pose but we'll have it more it'll be more something like this all right so before we start drawing um, I am going to just say a few hellos and you're not going to see my face some of that some of you might be pleased about that <laughs> but uh, all we're going to see is the sketch pad but feel free to talk to me and I'll be glancing up at the chat and oh my god somebody's hearing music outside awful music at that and um and we'll talk away so before we begin, uh, we've got Caden Valdez. How are you? The AMB lady is doing... Actually, she's not doing that great today because she has to work on a Sunday. and She's not happy about that. But uh, the AMB uh, lady in her cartoon format is having lots of fun being the AMB animation pin-up girl. Um, Cam Cameron Allen Davidson Black. How are you? Kitchikat. Good to see you. Uh, Caden is drawing his dinosaurs. Fantastic. Uh, Mr. Leon is becoming a regular on these streams. Um, good to see you, Charlene. Charlene Giles. I hope Charlene enjoys the traditional drawing that we're going to be doing today. Uh, Copper Star, uh, how are you? Um, and Rusty Revels. So there we go. Okay, James McCormick as well. Good to see you. I still have an electric pencil sharpener that is older than me. Still works. Yeah, I dropped mine and it broke into pieces. And I'm very sad about that. Right, okay, let's start. So what am I doing? Um, let me just first talk you through this sketch pad and give you a feel for the story. So I, I, I bought this to kind of like rough out ideas for Groundhopper. So here's the dialogue desk that I'm planning with, uh, 
with the great one so um he's holding the skull and it says here the the line that says these are almost like storyboard panels so um it says so it appears that another soul has come to me in search of the riddle of death so then he looks at the skull and he says very well then which death shall it be and then here we don't go here <laughs> here um it says yes so he looks up to himself it shall indeed be a very good death then he suddenly gets a little bit angry and goes nay a great death and he pulls the skull close to his face as if he's affirming to the skull how good the death will be then we got to this uh, shot here where he's looking at the skull and he says a death that will make existence worthy of life itself and then we see the skull and i didn't draw it but he kind of crushes the skull into pieces so that's the kind of thumbnails that we have for um the dialogue test that you're going to see me animating soon maybe next month i'm getting the voice recorded for it and then we'll be ready to go um this is just playing around trying to remember the ground hopper as i've been doing a lot of great one uh so i just scribbled him then i started to um go back to the uh sequence the story we've all seen him climbing up the mountain well some of us have um and he goes inside the temple so i'm starting it from here he walks into the door adjusts his as i said there'll be more panels and if this was being done digitally uh often i just draw this once and then um draw more panels on paper but without the background uh that's how we did it on tales of despero for universal pictures which was the boards we did for that movie look very similar to this is very looks very similar to what you see i did on that movie um so here uh he then we he, camera could actually dolly around as he's walking or we could cut to that it, it either way works um as he's walking towards he then notices something um, and looks a bit perturbed we then see uh, let me see if I can mirror the effect oopsie not really we see like a skull and we start pulling out and panning and whatever so we see these guys hanging um, here uh, and then we see him looking I really want to try and push for sincere expressions in this project so we see him kind of looking like what the what the fuck have i just walked into right um so and then he starts to look around it's it's dark here it'll be a lot darker in the finished thing but i need to kind of design the temple a little bit as i'm drawing this so he'll be a lot more rim lit it'll be it won't be lit at the moment when you do storyboards you just want it to read you want these things to read so while i'm creating a feel for the lighting with the rays of light and things and that and it all looks very pretty it's not exactly true i mean you can see me playing a little bit but i don't want him getting lost at this stage we want these things to read so for example his face is super bright here it wouldn't be in the actual art direction of the shot um so he starts walking and looking around um then he we see a shot of his foot about to step on something but him being the trained warrior he is he sort of jumps back and goes and like looks down and we see a skull lying here now i did mention that um on this side i kind of rough out ideas for the next for the composition and the framing so i don't have to spend too much time trying to get it right um so this one you can see i've kind of thought about it here he's looking down here and if we look at the original we see it here how it originally was when i was on holiday i did this so we're gonna make do that shot today um so we're gonna do that shot and i kind of like did i had a little rough mapping of it here in many cases that would be good for storyboard anyway but i'm trying to do something a little bit different with this i'm trying to do the art direction a little bit do you know if we don't get a great budget i can stick with this which looks nice but it could look a lot better if we had a better budget and we had somebody to go you know 
what will make this shot more interesting a and b or b if we do this that and the other you know somebody who's passionate about background design and art direction um as i said i can do it a little bit but um uh and i can do it quite well but i'm predominantly a character guy so if i had the budget i would love to get someone to really enrich it even further uh and push what i've got here right so this is it so we've just got a quick question from charlene when using two colors does each one represent an element of design such as foreground and background no no to be honest i don't normally work with two colors i've just gotten into that thing normally when we animate we draw lightly in one color and we tie we then get another color to tie it down and then we clean it up and finalize it in black you know but i've kind of gotten into like you know i like to lightly rough in rough in with the red and then finalize everything with the blue and then if i want certain things to be darker i'll just mix the two so just for example to make him stand out a little bit more and to push this stuff in the background a little bit more so it's purely just for aesthetic um i'm you wouldn't normally really use two colors like that the way i'm using hair is just something i've gotten into zentron i'm sorry to hear about that my friend right okay let's begin so i've prepared this uh here um, and I'm using this cool thing here, which I think a lot of comic book artists might enjoy uh, with this. So it's kind of like a little ruler thing and you've got all your little rounds. You can get speech bubble ones as well, um, but I find rounds are a little bit more useful. Okay, so I'm going to refer to my previous page. Um, so... The camera, the, I'm using two panels because the camera is going to pan up. But I want to think about, so I do want to think about my framing. So I'm going to kind of like give myself little rough ideas of where the camera is going to start and where the camera is going to end. It's mostly where the camera is going to end on a shot like this. Um, this is going to stay up a Zentron because it's an experiment. I'm... I'm, I'm not really giving instruction you're just going to watch me draw and we're going to hang out and talk but i've given a lot of priming a lot of you know sketchbook flip through at the start you know 17 minutes have gone by so we're just going to watch how i draw really but if people get more interested in this traditional way then we'll see um where where it goes so I'm going to think a little bit about that. Now notice how I'm using the side of my pencil and it's not sharp. Okay. I'm just using the side of my pencil like that. And I'm going to think about the main angles. So before I think about the background, I'm going to think more about, I don't care about the perspective and getting all that 100%. I care more about my framing, right? So I want our guy to be in the foreground. Uh, standing here so again you see I'm kind of looking at triangles right so I want him to be in the foreground and I want our skeleton to be on the floor but I want it to be obviously quite prominent um, so again I'm thinking about the angles his hand has got to be near his foot all right for continuity so if his foot's kind of here um, and his other foot's kind of here like that so I'm gonna think of the ground hopper as a triangle and I'm gonna think of the skeleton now the skeletons a baboon skeleton so he's a lot bigger gonna be a lot bigger than the ground hopper I want all the skeletons in here to be a significant deal bigger than our hero right so I'm kind of mapping this out right so one hand here body here so this triangle is creating his hands are splayed open uh, arms are splayed open and it's creating a frame here right and it's all going this way now we want something countering it going this way, right? So, um, sorry to hear about that, Zentron. As I said, can be quite a shock. Um, so now we've got like a 
kind of top down angle I'm not sure I hear I've kind of got his ears in shot but I want the groundhopper to kind of be a little bit out of shot here so I'm gonna push his uh, perspective a little bit more but I'm not see look how I'm dealing with it all as shapes so it's all the same deal secret science of shape simplification stuff right so now I, even though he's wearing this big goat right I'm not using that as a cop out to uh, because a shot like this needs anatomy so I'm thinking of his back his hips right his tail I wonder if this is all reading to you guys as I'm doing this but it'll all kind of get stronger right so then here is I got to think about his leg position right so he would have put his foot down here maybe he would have stepped back a little bit so I will think about his feet so for me, I don't really, the background's all atmospheric and dark. I don't really care about getting, I never have, as a storyboard artist, cared about getting super accurate perspective, right? I'm not doing um, comic book cityscapes or anything like that, right? So this kind of is going to be the pose of the groundhopper standing here right his arm is gonna be down here like that I'm gonna do a few lines to kind of help this thing work right so for me the main thing is this shot here and this shot here and I may have to think rethink this because if I come here and I work in a six frames, six frames here, and six frames here, six frames, six centimeters, right? I don't want, um, I don't necessarily want to cut off the guy's face, um, but he has got arrows sticking out of his back, right? So. We want to focus on that in the shot as well. Um, so I may push him up a little bit. I may push his head here, his back here like this. And then we can change the angle so it's more of a triangle like this, right? Um, so his head's here. So once I've got this worked out, then I can think about the ideas for the background. So then this hand can be here. Right? This hand can be further back like that. So this is the real you know thing for me um, getting the composition right and working with these shapes is what it's all about right so now just before I rub it back and start refining it now I'm gonna think about the floor right so I'm gonna kind of like have it like this right and we're gonna kind of like have it coming maybe changing those angles like this you see how organic I, I make all of this right maybe here we can have some of the side wall something up here coming into the there's a negative area between the ground hopper and the skeleton and in here I may want to put some thing to help the perspective of the shot right and there's gonna be more skeletons kind of lying here which I can 
think about just working in the dark there. That's it. That is what I want, right? So now I'm going to switch from this to this, right? But I'm not going to necessarily hold it down here and try to be all thing. I'm going to be a little bit further up, right? So now I'm going to think about my character's model, right? He's got a head, right? Anatomy comes into play. So he's got the occipital portion of his skull, right? Which comes back like that, right? And he's going to be looking down at his at whatever he's looking at right so I'm gonna think about the shape of his head a little bit again I'm not I'm, I'm turning it it's I'm still staying on shapes I'm not trying so hard to get it on model right at the moment well the shapes are on model now he'll have his ears which will be kind of like coming towards us so look how I just do this to kind of help me get the perspective of the ears coming towards us like that right so then here we want to think about the back right so his neck is going to be out here like this and his upper upper cage is going to be like that right something like that and his trapezius actually would come all the way down but i like to just focus on the top you've got three sections to do a trapezius there right so a little bit of anatomy but a little bit of shapes happening here as well the body is here he has a tail but we're not we're going to draw over that but as i said i want to get the perspective of the the character right i don't really care too much about the background as much right so his arm is gonna be here like this and this arm is gonna be down here like that right so we're gonna bring his legs in like this bring this one straight right straight back to mr leon look at this look at this triangle here we're gonna bring that straight there like that right so he's in the foreground um and it's looking pretty i'm i'm pretty happy with the angle there the foot i'm just gonna focus with a shape and another shape He's got quite big feet, but, you know, we want to keep him slightly perspective. Oh, there we'll think about the fingers. No real detailing at the moment. Just enough to give me the idea of his proportions, right? So, uh, again, I want the top to be a lot heavier. Okay, so we've kind of got something there like that. Mm -mm -mm. Now we want to think about the skeleton, right? So I've got my skeleton here, and I've got my skeleton here. But thankfully in my rough other sketch pad, I've got this one here. Right? So... I'm going to have the head leaning over to the side a little bit like this. If it doesn't 100% hook up to this, I don't care, right? It's all in the early stage. Da, da, da. Right. And again, here is... I'm not going to think too much. I'm just going to think about the main part. So the zygomatic bone right and then we have the so you see when you see me drawing in software you see me 
changing colors and all that, right? Well, I'm going to show you and then drawing on top, right? Without adding another layer. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how that works in this thing, right? And I'm not pressing hard, right? I'm not pressing hard on my pencil at all. Okay. So I'm just mapping in the main shapes of the feature of this guy. And then I'll come in and do and an have another pass. So right, this is all rough building. So that's where the head is. That's looking good. The space between these two, uh, we can cut off the frame there. The other thing we've already seen his um, his head in this shot here, right? Um, so now it doesn't matter we want to see his back we want to see the arrows um so his i'm gonna think about his main body gauge which is gonna be a shape like this now he's wearing armor so that's kind of helpful for that um and he's got these huge shoulder pads i did a bit of google research um for uh, goats that possibly would have l no baboons this is a baboon the the goat skeletons I've got I want all different types goats baboons you know tigers so here are the goat skeletons so these would have been like mountain goat warriors that would have stumbled and you know all in search of the riddle of death <laughs> this guy is made like a I'm giving a little bit of the story away here, but it's almost like a museum of all of the people, all of the people who have come into his temple, ruined temple, and he's just, you know, displaying uh, his artifacts of the warriors he has killed. Right, anyway, so notice how I'm using this to help perspective of the ground because I've got these lines coming here which are helping me get that right so he's he would have his pelvis hair these animals are considerably bigger than the ground hopper uh, I want skeletons to be considerably bigger a baboon is bigger than a hair um, so then he would have his thing coming here like that and again these are just my early ideas if I feel that it's the skeleton is too big um, that's you know when we start to go into full production we can scale it down uh, that the important thing is is even though it seems like I'm being precious here I'm actually not um, you've seen my groundhopper project in so many incarnations with lots of detail drawing and animation but none of that stuff has stayed right even the character design has changed so it's as i'm making this project on my own i'm having to um presently on my own i'm having to just really just use everything as a as an opportunity to try things right so he's got this shoulder armor i want to press it against the ground to give it a little bit of weight right and then he will have i'm getting caught up in the model here i shouldn't yet as of yet his hand will be out here like that and now to focus on the arrows because the arrows are very important we can think about adding another one in my sketch so one two three why because i want to think about the composition always i'm coming back to um yeah mountain goats goats are um awesome charlene right so we've got an arrow here and an arrow I want to think about how they're dividing the frame okay many people talk about the rule of thirds and all that 
it's a good rule but also i i encourage people particularly people who draw to go with shape uh, harmony even more negative space um it'll just help right now i'm gonna put i'm gonna kind of like just put these lines in a little bit harder you'll see why in a minute right um like this again here not a hundred percent caring about the perspective but just enough to give some uh, believability to um, to what we're doing here right? right that's good okay now this is where this is my tool right this is what makes drawing so much fun for me right I'm just gonna simply get this putty eraser and knock it all back right? so let me just get my other sketchbook while I'm here to kind of a lot of people wonder how I get nice clean lines with my HB pencil right so what better example can I give you than the AMB lady sketchbook so a lot of that is done using putty eraser right some of these drawings are rougher so you'll be able to see oops see this is going to be tricky so if we come in here we can look at a lot of um pencil art that i've been doing with this you know this character now they they were all drawn like the way you're seeing me draw um today right but i rubbed down with the putty eraser and I drew with uh, the pencil on top. Now, I didn't have my color rays when I did these. So I did these all with black pencil. Um, so I used the putty eraser with a black pencil. So you don't need to use colored pencils, right? So then here, all of these drawings were done on the same page, right? You can see that they're a little bit worked and rough if you go in close right you can see that some of those lines are smudged a little bit from the putty eraser then i kind of got my cull erasers and i was like screw that i'm kind of like done with the super clean laser line let's just have fun with the cull rays i didn't i didn't use the putty eraser to knock them back i just cleaned up on top so you can see what well, that's what it looks like without the putty eraser being used too much here again the blue color rays so everything you're seeing me do today is the way that i work with um pencil now i'm gonna before i go uh and finalize i'm gonna give it just one two like that not much right? um because now I'm going to come in here and start building the character right on top. So I need to think about his hairstyle a little bit. Right? So I'm going to work a little bit. Just start building around my shapes. Right. With the character's model. So hopefully you can pick that up what I'm doing the lighting isn't the best right let me see if I can just no this this LED light is not able hopefully you can see that so many AMB ladies yeah <laughs> my favorite pastime mr. Leon is drawing the AMB ladies you should sell copies yeah i will when um when the uh when the sketchbook is done i will sell copies right um 
back to this. I'll have a look at the chat in a minute. First, I'll kind of rough out this guy. Now, I don't need to think too much about his body as I did before, right? Um, not focusing very well. Yeah, it's an experiment. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm doing my best to try and get this. Let me see if I can bring in a little bit more light here. Um, so, as I said, I don't have the best uh, equipment here to do traditional drawing, but I thought we'd, we'd do something different today. And hopefully you'll be able to pick it up when I start to draw harder with the, with the blue pencil. Everything has a phase, right? So here we've got the... Um, his, I'm going to loosely put in his job, but now I'm going to start putting, drawing the character's clothes on top, right? So he will have a, I've got it all kind of roughed out here, just to kind of help me with that. So he will have a, a hood, which will come back on itself like that. So again, I'm going to think about shapes, right? And it's going to come down. So I want to go completely over him. Now his thing is going to go over his arm on this side and around this arm. Now I want to think about how that's going to be draping down and around him like this so it would be something like this right so this would essentially be the shape that we have right that gives me something to think about right okay I'm gonna stop looking at that and start going back to this so again I want to beef the this shape up so I'm gonna make everything a little bit bigger right around like that everything is gonna be about this shape now making this shape look nice right because that's what his garment is right so I want this shape to look extra nice so again I'm thinking about the silhouette I'm gonna turn it like that now I'll think about the drapery coming around his arm it's thick we need to think about the material being used which is fur yes you're right Charlene I, as I said this was just a I was gonna draw this panel and not live stream but this was just a little moment of inspiration and I said well would people like to see this so nothing something for people who want to do content creation a little tip through the years that I've been doing it don't try to be perfect don't think I haven't got the equipment to do this at the end of the day um, it's kind of like the software thing you can get, give people amazing software but if they don't know how to animate it all looks shit right my drawings kick ass so if people really want to see good drawing then they're gonna watch right if they don't if they're so hung up about the the camera then fine go and watch an inferior artist do something with a better camera right um, but if the thing takes off then I will um, then I will definitely look to getting ring lights and better equipment for this now I need to think about the feet all right so notice how I switch to silhouette mode for that I'm gonna come down here bring this foot down a little 
like that. Yep. Normally you wouldn't put feet to edge of frame, but with a panel like this, I may want to start here, right? I may want to start at his hand, but I'm giving myself a little bit of leeway at the beginning. I may want to finish here, right? When you're moving the camera up, these things, you, so you don't have to, like, this is an idea of, of where I start and finish, and I can go with it or change it. But so again, nothing is really set in stone, particularly at this stage. Right, so we have his feet here like that, and finally his hands. And you'll see this is, so can you see, if you watch my live streams where I draw, right, it's all on the same layer, right? So hopefully this gives you the understanding of the mentality of what i call real animator mentality it's like we never what what you see me do digitally it's nothing that i can't do on paper right so i feel that this head could be a little bit out to the side a bit or i could increase it a little bit in size right to to, to balance it i don't need to flip i could hold my drawing up to the light right and see that there's a left right imbalance you hold it up to the light and look but i don't need to because my inner eye of understanding is also is telling me that there's a little bit of an imbalance on his head so i'm going to move away from the construction and go more into the appealing shapes here right to kind of balance that out and i can exaggerate his head from the back view so whether he would really look like that from the back again i this is the luxury of drawing we can change the model to suit the angle he's at right so there we are that's looking pretty good to me again I'm going to hesitate from casting shadows, even though there would be casting shadows, and we would need to think about that. Um, thank you, EMP. I wish I could. I don't want to deceive you. This isn't really a tutorial. This is just me kind of explaining while I draw many things. If anything, I'm kind of... We talked a little bit about the storyboard, but now I'm just talking about the way I draw with these things. So, But thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream all right so that's that i'm gonna leave that so now i'm gonna start um working on this guy now um, so i have my head which is here which i can refer to as i'm kind of drawing this so again we want the round of the of the helmet right now I'm going to use the round of that helmet to really help me get the face to look good using the secret science of shape simplification right so I'm just gonna come from this front portion and that's gonna help me kind of understand where his maxilla and zygomatic bone and all those things are so his eye is going to be in here i'm cutting off a bit of his eye with the top of the helmet right not that i don't know if that's really reading to you guys but when i draw that in nicely you'll be able to see and i like flipping back and forth it takes me back to traditional animation right many times um we would animate panels on Fantastic Mr. Fox and Tales of Despero, which were some of the last mediums where we worked with traditional pencil and paper for professional storyboards. Uh, some of the last projects I worked on before I switched over to Photoshop. And I would board in Photoshop because the bitmap brushes were very much felt like drawing with red pencil. I didn't have a Cintiq at the time. I had a Wacom Inf Intuos, an A3 Intuos uh, tablet, 
which um, and Storyboard Pro was available but it was only vector and it's funny because now you see me predominantly drawing in Storyboard Pro using the vector brush but at the time I was so against it uh, because I liked the feel of pencil and I didn't want to change I didn't like working digitally I liked storyboarding traditionally and it was kind of like a defiance on my part uh, you know an unwillingness to grow an unwillingness to try something new so I would um, I would uh, let me just get my other guy here for reference now I would um, turn away jobs that were um, offered to me utilizing Toon Boom Storyboard Pro. Uh, hard to believe when it's the thing that I do most of my work in now. Animation, storyboard, everything. But at the time I just didn't want to change from what I knew. I was loved drawing traditionally and then Photoshop was felt more like drawing with pencil with the opacity brush and I could have it red and and then I could draw over it with blue and with the layers and I just didn't want to know the vector which was very much like drawing with pen but um, one day I was kind of forced to work in it because I really wanted the job I became an animation director on uh, Lego The Legends of Chima and I had to utilize Storyboard Pro in that uh, scenario. So um, I then realized that the, the vector brush was very fast, um, almost like drawing with black pen. I was against vector because of the program Adobe Flash. I thought all vector brushes would have the same issues that Flash had where you would draw a line and it would turn into a hexagonal line or it wouldn't go exactly where you placed your mark. But Storyboard Pro's brushes were almost like drawing with, um, with a marker pen and the line went exactly where I wanted it to go. So I was like, okay, and then that became my transition into predominantly doing everything digitally. I could realize that I could animate in the program, and as long as the lines went where I wanted them to go, um, I was a happy man. So it was very, very much better than Flash. But now I find myself working um, traditionally again. Um, and what I love is, is that having my space on social media with the people who enjoy my content, um, you guys are so open to seeing the pencil sketches. You, in fact, some of my pencil sketches um, get a lot more um, attention and uh, likes, if you like, than uh, than the uh, digital stuff. Even if it's like a, a piece of animation, some people like just the rough sketch that I've done of um, of these guys of of this stuff, and it's all like. Uh, encouraging to me to go well okay if people like that that I actually prefer doing it this way um, let's see if you want to let's see if you like watching me do it this way but then of course I'll have to up my game in terms of the camera placement and the lighting just using a webcam however HD it is is not good enough I may need to get a drone to float above my shoulder and I'll start animating uh, on paper. Um, we'll see, right? Okay, so these are the... Um, now, what I might want to do to contour his uh, chain mail would just put these lines here like this, right? And that 
um, those lines being kept in there are just fine but I can I can start just putting chain mail markings on there I'm gonna come and look if any of you have asked me anything in the chat or if you're just happy to just watch me doodle this away right so I'm kind of digging that now um, I can see that all working let's move this away let's look at the original because the original always looks better um, it's a little tighter but there are elements I like about that but you know I've got to commit I've got to make it somehow work okay so now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to heavy the outline because I'm happy with it. Thank you, Cody Bot. Um, Copper Star, I love traditional art. It's one of my favorites um, when it comes to drawing. Yep. Well, I actually uh, attended a clay sculpture workshop. I really didn't want to go, but the guy wanted me there at his workshop to be a guest to help him tell his students about drawing from a live model and he said the first half we're gonna be building a clay sculpture from the live model and I was like I don't do 3d I don't wanna so again there was my like then my wife said you're always telling people about stepping out of the comfort zone you hypocrite I was like damn she's got me right okay so I went along and I didn't want to do any drawing after that I was just lost in the clay I absolutely loved it um, I was drawing with my hands and and it was just amazing and I was thinking to myself that actually physically sculpting with the clay is a good way of understanding the secret science of shape simplification for beginners now before I go drawing on top and tidying this up even more um, I don't need to rub that out but I just want you to see what it'll look like the same with his feet I need to think a little bit about the background now I could use this for the background but I'm not going to as I said I don't really care about stuff like that oh I did say I would look at the chat let, just let me quickly I've got my mouse here right let me quickly see what people are saying in the chat. Ba -ba -bum. Who have we got online? Uh, many people are, are okay. We're talking about Zentron's sudden shock. So I'm sorry to hear about that. I'll just let you guys give Zentron some comfort while I see if there's any particular question about drawing and storyboard. Um, start, I get stuck on the rule of thirds nice to know you can draw with shapes for composition yeah shapes are good but the rule of thirds is good is a good basic thing um, I don't know how to switch to manual focus on this webcam it's it's just a, a webcam um, doesn't really have any buttons on it my pleasure Octavio um, okay people just talking amongst themselves right I'm gonna get back to this right so I'm now going to think about the background now as I said I'm just gonna lightly go in here with some hori kind of Rate horizontal lines all going this way right and I know that it wouldn't really be doing that he's, he's we've got a much wider thing so I'm gonna rein them in I'm gonna kind of change the perspective line up here like this right doesn't matter right if you understand the basics of perspective you can intuitively feel your way to get something that works and looks nice right so now I'm gonna shoot this out here like this all these getting a ruler out right and committing to that especially if you're a beginner 
right? It's really not. See now I'm using his body. I'm going back. I'm kind of pulling and playing until I get something that I'm happy with. And a lot of this is going to be atmospherics and darks. So why do I care, right? Why do I care about that stuff? It's very intuitive. Right, so I'm going to look here. Now what I have um, is my rough drawings that I've done in the other book, which give me kind of like an idea. This was like, as I said, this can go in the dustbin now. It was just trying to figure out what the temple looks like. So it's kind of like an idea of the floor. Um, what I also have um, is, I'll show them to you. I'm just opening them up. Um, Groundhopper development, excuse me. Um, I also have things like this, right? So let me put this on the other screen so you can see it. Yeah, my voice is going to be very faint with this microphone, but I have things like this here. Um, so I've got these things that are worked out for me. The temple floor that's worked out. All these things are all worked out. Initial ideas, you know, uh, that was initial development of the goat sketch. So you see all this stuff um, in these development drawings. So I'm just going back to the skeleton. Right, so a lot of groundhopper development art, right? So that we've also got this. So I'm just looking at all this to help me with the floor um, designs. We've got this one here. This is what later happens in the temple. So some early concept art. Again here we've got that. Uh, so we've got this. I'm not going to use this one at the moment. Um, this is the one that I'm leaning at looking at using. Um, so let, let me, me come, come back. back to my thing here. Now why did I want that? Because I've got a, I want to hint at something here, right? I want to hint at something along here like this, right? And I want to hint at more kind of dead bodies in the dark, right? Here like this. So I'm giving myself something to think about there like that. And it's going to be all be very, very dark. But why? Why am I sharing that with you? Because there's no concept art for this. I'm doing all the concept art. And I'm using these storyboard panels to create the concept art. Well, there is a little bit of concept art that I'm doing, but this is how I'm multitasking to kind of like get everything um, working as best I can. Now I'm going to think about the floor, right? So I'm going to put some floor in here. And all of these shapes, right, that I'm making for the floor, I want them to kind of echo this triangle going towards the character. So I'm going to start. I want them all to kind of help the composition. I want everything to lead the eye in. So I'm going to start making these shapes at various points. which are then going to help me think about the floor, which is all going to be kind of like this. Octavio, if you're still watching, remember I told you when you're doing your storyboards about the insects, so on a shot like this I might have an insect running across that skull, all right, which isn't included in the storyboard or something coming out of the eye, all right, um, just to give it more of that feel. 
I don't really need this anymore so I'm just gonna put this away um, let's just put that there um, so the floor is then gonna all be kind of helped again look at the secret science of shape simplification I think I'll show you how to make the floor look even better right but at the moment it'll do for what it is then we've got to think a little bit about values and values for storyboard like this is a little bit as I mentioned earlier right I'm thinking about values but it's not complete true values because if he was walking in here he would be like here I've kind of indicated it but he would this would be a lot darker a lot darker but I want to see I want to design a little bit in these boards so I'm not like so here he would be complete blackness i would have his eyes showing there'd be just this white all right just a few hints of shape so we wouldn't really see any of these bricks or any of those things but i need to design the temple while i'm doing this and i want this to read as a storyboard so here he's completely white against dark he's just standing out you might see that in a lot of storyboards um so again here his face is completely white and everything else is dark it just makes it read as a storyboard you look at it we want to see the expression so it's kind of we're getting value but we're not really trying to get it true value at this stage we want things to read but but indicate what what the value is gonna be right so now here i might have another warrior kind of lying here like this in fact yeah in my rough drawing here there was a head in the foreground there were lots of these things so i might have a few other um shapes on the floor here like this so let's think about a body lying here with some arrows right some hands we don't want it to really re really get get too caught up with near this guy's head so i'm kind of like just giving myself some kind of idea there'll be a boot there something like that maybe i'll put the hand out here like this i'll come back to that you see it's all um helping it um, develop along the way so this is what we call story sketching as well as storyboarding um, mood now I know that all around here is going to be dark so I can just suggest things here like I can suggest some legs and I can suggest a bit of rope and I can suggest something here but all of this is going to be dark so that's why again i wasn't so 100 percent in with the um perspectives of all that what i might want is the foreground is looking a bit empty here right so either i can use the lighting or i can put something else here right i can put some kind of like um garment or some rough piece of cloth for the moment and that could indicate a body maybe there could be an arrow like so if that's the perspective maybe there could be an arrow coming up here the perspective isn't a hundred percent but this is a panning drawing right so we could have an arrow and another arrow i don't want some anything too much around this arm but I'm just thinking of how to make this triangle read, right? Yep, that's good. So now I'm going to use my friend all over again, right? It's almost like using the opacity layer in Photoshop. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take it all back. just like that right? and it's all there for me to see right? 
and this this you're going to watch like we're one hour nine minutes in but you're going to watch how that basically me i'm going to finish it to this stage right so you're going to watch how it it just it just you've basically seen it all build but now you're going to watch me get a nicer line on that so you're going to see why animators use small strokes when they draw so i've sharpened it up a little bit right now i'm going to just do that because it's easier for me right so first thing i'm going to do is create the outline look at the silhouette of my character right so when I clean the sky up what we do particularly in hand-drawn animation is as we for many reasons they like to close their lines especially when they digitally color nowadays but for the better reason you want to really look at your character's silhouette right. so and this is how i weight my line as well right just like that so i'm weighting this line here before i go in drawing that i want to put the feet in it's very important see how much nicer it is when you know how to weight a line you don't fiddle about with digital lines and try to make your digital lines thick and thin you just know right, how to do it so hopefully that's coming up on the screen nice and clear to the person who was worried about focus a little bit and actually you can see at how much faster it is to clean up on paper than it is to clean up in the machine right because the one the rotation do the feel of when i indent the paper with this line right I'm able to really, really just commit. You can't get that with glass, right? I draw really well with glass, as you see, and I'm really fast. So it's not really that big a deal. But for me, paper is king. It will always be king, right? So now I'm cutting into this. Mr. Leon, look how I'm thinking about these shapes within the shapes right and we're gonna create just another one like that. come around here <laughs> hopefully I'll be inspiring some of you to go to your sketch pads today that'll that'll be a win for me if i can just get one person to go i'm gonna try that i'm gonna try and do a story sketch in my sketch pad or i'm gonna get a potty eraser i'm gonna try using the side of my pencil and then knocking it back with the potty eraser You see, you get these nice swooping strokes, which come in like this, right? So that's our foreground guy standing in there. Let's get his foot. The foot, we want to get the outside to get the feeling of the calcaneus. That'll come down there like this. 
Now here I want to do exactly the opposite. I want to get the inside of that and shoot out to the heel, which should be further up. There, like that. There we go. Right, really and truly he should be casting a shadow. But I don't want to be thinking about any of that at the moment. What I do want to do is he is predominantly in the foreground. So I'm going to put a little bit of kind of value study on him. Just create a little bit of rim light around him. Like that. Bum, bum, bum. So I'm just drawing the shapes of shadow, right? That occur within. Right? Put a bit of rim light on it like that. There we go. Rim light his feet. Again, we, it's just a feel. It wouldn't really be that, right? Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just give myself a feel with the side of my pencil for that. Right. So that'll do for now. I may bring it down and I might push it just a little bit but not too much right darken around the neck the inside darken the inner bit hair right this will generally be darker right but again i don't want to get too caught up at the moment especially at the moment right we're not really this is not a true value study we want our character to read right we we don't want this to become a box of pencils you know ejaculating over the, the the paper right so we lose everything but i want to create a little bit of ambience in the scene right so he will be in the kind of the foreground there like that thank you um uh dylan draws when i use my party eraser drawing figure drawing i think of you amb awesome i'm tempted to use notebook paper since all I have is paper at the moment. Good, no pressure. This is a victory for me, right? If I've helped you do that. Now, I'm not going to be as clean with this guy, but I'm still going to look for definite shapes, right? I can be a little bit more forgiving with him because he's a background element. But he's quite prominent, and it's all part of the storytelling. So I'm going to pick out... See, I'm not really rotating... I was going to say rotating the disc, but rotating the paper to get these lines because they're not as important to me, right? So, but I'm going to just do enough, right, to get his silhouette reading, right? It's all about silhouette. And his front silhouette is more important than his rear silhouette where his legs are right so i want i want it to read before i start filling in the details always and especially with storyboard or even if you want to say comic book right um before you get caught up with those details i urge you to do the outlines and the silhouette so you'll be able to say to yourself is everything reading am i seeing the main point of the shot that what's the purpose of this shot right it's not to have a nice pretty drawing to post on social media and get likes and shares right it's to make sure that we're seeing the peril of the scene 
as it's being revealed to us through the eyes of our protagonist so we're looking over the shoulder we want to see that he has been impaled by arrows I'm just gonna make those arrows a little bit more kind of decrepit if I wanted to I could put cobwebs on them but that'll be more for visual development prop design if we're doing close-ups in a storyboard panel like this where the pencil starts to smudge and all that kind of stuff it's not really gonna read so we just want to look at it in its rawest form uh, which is what that is at the moment right and is it reading as a top shot right kind of like perspective looking down uh, that's what we want even at this early stage right don't just a little bit of chain mail just to indicate that but not too much this will all be in the dark just a slight indication of rib cage and cracks on the character you see the good thing about this as I've been doing this particular stream not a single comment has been the bruh brah what software brah <laughs> you know which is great um, because it really has got no relevance and the way I'm drawing here is almost identical to the way you see me draw in and there's no free transforming so the lovely Hervonia Baker is not online which is a shame because she likes to draw in her sketchbook and she's always saying I can't get the size right so notice how I'm not shrinking the the drawing uh, to make it fit in the box right so that's because um, when you work with a tablet doesn't matter even if it's a bigger tablet there's a tendency to want to zoom in whereas here I'm not zooming in I'm just pushing my head closer to the page um, hey Michael Elliott how are you doing um, so I'm getting everything where it needs to be right? um, so that's all good right I like to save the face to last for some reason right okay let's get his baboon skull in here he'll have his teeth four incisors we'll give him his nose perfect right I'm gonna go in here and add some values so here we have our main two parts of the show right I'm not gonna think about the shading and values on him at the moment it's not important um, but what I am gonna do is see how it's all reading right uh, so he's here he's continuing to walk he notices something we see what he sees we see his reaction he starts to continue to walk looking around his foot goes on something he notices he looks down um, and then the camera booms out or we cut wide 
do this uh, where we will drain up fast with a um, fan uh, up there like that or we you know um, we boom out and I give myself leeway you know this isn't I may not start the camera directly at the bottom position here that's the impo important thing okay so what I am going to do here is I'm going to think about very lightly coming in here and remember how I mentioned the arrows right so I'm going to think about having some arrows in the foreground which I'm going to lightly do as kind of three-dimensional blocks just to help me get the perspective of that right and I don't want to go too much over the guy's um, head a little bit too high a little bit too big but it's the chance to play right the chance to play he could be slumped on something here it's okay right so I'm immediately exploring again I'm gonna leave it and come back to it after putting in a little bit of floor right so I'm asking questions and doesn't matter how far down in the drawing I am again don't be precious this is all about um, story development story sketches it's okay it doesn't matter right there was a time when I was storyboarding I would want to even get the floor if have I got the floor to hook up with this panel and get the floor model right you know this very overly uh, precious behavior it doesn't matter this is all pre-production right it will eventually it's being done to this level to help me speed up the production process for example if I was so inclined but I would never do that I could I could just start treating this like little red and using these drawings as finished backgrounds to to animate on and I could I could actually make the animation a lot quicker than little red and post it on YouTube and it may get even more views and all that but I'm not interested in that. I want to do things to the best of my ability and to the highest of my ability. Little Red was my little kind of playing, getting things done out at a faster rate. I'm still doing this kind of fast, but I want to spend a little bit more time on visual development with this particular project. Because visual development enriches the story in many ways even more than the actual animation right so we don't want to all of the thing that's making this cool the rabbit hasn't done anything other than walked through a door right but what we've seen as he's walked through the door is just what makes it so interesting and holds our attention so here I'm kind of losing the perspective of the floor a little bit, but that's okay. I can bring it in with some of these lines and the shading will help it help it along as I'm starting to detail that out like that. Now I'm going to come in here. Now here is where uh, we were thinking about putting in another body, right? So I will loosely rough in a shape like this. All right almost like they were trying to crawl to safety right so i'm talking to myself while i was while i'm drawing this is it's like at the moment i'm just trying to suggest ideas to make the composition more interesting to do more storytelling 
um, putting in a body in a similar position to that. But then I'm trying to like think to myself, well, is this a good idea? Like, what what could this be like? Even though we'll never know the story of these baboons, everything is an opportunity to tell a story, right? The baboon, the baboon quest, you know, uh, or something. But I'm just giving myself a little bit of story here, like they're so close to the entrance, maybe they were trying to escape and they were already impaled with the arrows or whatever so um, I'm coming in here trying to enrich my drawing with story right so that's what that's what's happening here so we're putting in another panel here to suggest this here I'm going to put an indication of boots and I'm I haven't really designed the boots but they're all gonna be in silhouette so it doesn't matter and I don't want them to go over the arrow right that'll do then we can have maybe some more arrows up here like that let's make him like obsessive compulsive so always three arrows the number three okay um let's say that he's always impaling them with three arrows see i'm just making shit up but i'm trying to get my head inside the story but potential things for me to make this even more interesting right so he's not a serial killer but <laughs> he's making a carnival of of um, death right so here we could have some boots and more kind of body against the wall then against the wall we were gonna have this pillar which was going to be here you see I'm not because the lighting is all going to be dark there I'm not so worried about my perspective right it's not one of those drawings to really get so lost in if I was going to rein in the perspective I would do it in this foreground element here right because as far as I'm concerned all of this is working and all of this is going to be dark right all of this is going to be dark so I have to think, even though this guy is in the foreground and I want him darked out. Um, Carnival of Death. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted him saying in here, to in his mind, but not in dialogue. Just like, this is a Carnival of Death. You know, a celebration you know, of, of death. So I'm pretty... I'm pretty cool with this now I'm just gonna do something here to change the floor up a little bit right I originally had an idea of what I wanted here but I don't think it's going to be the case right so let's just Keep that going. Let's keep that going this way. Somehow keep these all going up and out. We don't want to be fighting the lines, right? So here, and I can throw in little stones in here like that. That's better. Throw in out here anything to help push the outward angle All right. and the side of my pencil the erasing is all going to help with that now i'm still gonna want to think about having a foreground element here um 
perhaps not as big as before, right? So I will think about if the if there was a body here, right? So I might draw a little bit beyond and I might put the arrow less, a lot less bigger, right? Than I initially, now I've got the rule of three for his three arrows, just something nice there like that, yes. So now I'm gonna come in here And I'm going to put my arrow in here like that. There's going to be a smaller one here. So it all goes kind of like with the line of the arm and helps the, the angle. So the piercing of the armor here. Like this. This one is out here like that. Triangle in there, right? Nice little triangle in there. Dead soldiers in full arm killed with the arrows. Who could have done this? I'll tell you, Michael Elliott, who did it. This guy here did it. But even now he's uh, crushing another skull. Right, so. There you go. Uh, Michael Elliott, always with nice comments on my channel, always appreciated. Right, so I'm now going to throw a little bit of rag in there because rag always helps. Right, so here I, if there is anything I don't like, it's the way the feet are at the bottom, which you never generally do. But it's not really worth worrying about because as I said, I may want to start my pan from here, but I want to, these drawings have to be, I've got to kind of work these drawings out, which is why they've got this nice sketchy feel to them. Um, and I'm not being too precious about it. Um, what I'm going to do is knock this back a little bit and lock down the foreground. What a magnificently evil vibe, a fortress in the mountains, dead soldiers <laughs> killed while fleeing by who or by what. Exactly. You know, um, I, I would get done, but I've been listening to a piece of music from uh, Conan the Barbarian called Atlantean Sword, which very much inspires me. Cody Bot might know what that is, as would Zentron. Um, very much inspires me on this scene. Um when Conan goes into a cave and finds a an abandoned sword amongst these old warriors, you know, these skeleton warriors, and he finds his sword that becomes his sword of these ancient Atlantean giants. And very much as I was doing this, I've been remembering that kind of staging, you know, where you literally have to really scrunch to see the skeletons in the dark, right? Um, of course, we don't have to scrunch to see these ones because I've got to plan it all out first, right? <laughs> so I'm giving myself some skeletons to kind of like maybe to see here, but... Uh, but that's that. Right, now before I go and getting my, yeah, da, 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 da. also when you're drawing, now excuse my stupid singing, but when you're doing these things, you want to kind of think, so you want to always imagine the music like, da, 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 then the voice ah oh, all that kind of thing you want in your head it sounds like i'm a little kid going choo choo whoosh, guns and shooting but in a way you got to kind of have 
that mentality when you're doing these things um, because you really want to get into the story so to speak um, as as it's all being done right so before I get my blue pencil out I am going to make some value rough value studies to help this thing along right because you're seeing it in its bare bone stages right so what will make the floor interesting and make my work a lot easier with the floor is to go along the cracks and start making those stones stand out So we're already starting to get ambience from these kind of things. And the stones will be even more interesting when we start adding little cracks to them. So just shapes within shapes with little bits of detail. Right. So at the moment we're kind of just scribbling in between the cracks. To make all these things stand out. All right. I'm going to come in here. Just give them some uniformity by smudging it all in like that. Now here is where I need to think about my super blacks. Right where all of this stuff is going to emerge from so around here it's going to be a lot darker all right around there in between here it's all darks where his feet is again he would be there would if i it would be so dark he wouldn't be casting a shadow but we might if we were thinking value have him casting shadow but we want everything to read so as i said it's it's not true value it's just a general thing of helping this stuff pop right which is what we do in storyboard art we want things to read and worry about the concept part of it all a little bit later i want this to be in the dark here so we don't know really what's up ahead right. i want all this to be dark here like that right then a little bit of shadow between him and the skeleton to help the skeleton read like that okay so we're starting to have um, something there I'm not sure if we can really see as i've knocked it back so um yeah we can see that so we're starting to have something like that right now what I'm going to do just on the floor here is I'm going to start putting cracks and I could go in and do this with the blue pencil but because everything is kind of being done in this way with the red pencil it'll just not the blue is a little bit weaker than the red so in some regards even though it's a, it's a, stronger color so in the red smudge the blue would look kind of faint so i'm just beefing up these stones with some random cracks right and again knowing how to draw the cracks on the stones right is similar to knowing how to do bunching on the hair right you it's all intuitive and it's all little strokes but they are all appealing in their own right um, and they're placed 
intuitively in the right place, right? It just takes a little bit of practice and getting used to to being able to do that, right? I will do that more with the blue pencil, but I'm just giving myself a feel to populate this. Here. Okay, done. That's good. Right, let's now bring out this boy. We could use black if we want, it doesn't matter, but I just love my color rays. I've missed using them just for that sole purpose. Sole purpose is just that. So I'm gonna heavy this. Quite a strong amount of pressure being applied to the line. How are we doing for time? One hour, 45 minutes. Not bad. This panel is taking, is a longer panel to do. Again, as I said, right? If we're talking storyboard, it doesn't have to be like this. If you're on a full scale product, this would have been good enough, right? But I don't have an art director, a production designer, a concept, visual development. I'm doing this all myself. So that's why I like to board like this, right? And it helps me manage the direction of the show a lot better, right? So even if we were to ra have a budget and I was able to cast this to people, I've been there, I've storyboarded the whole thing. To be honest, I would probably not animate as much if I had budget for this and I would end up uh, boarding and managing it all. Kind of like the way a Miyazaki or a Don Bluth uh, work because that's what happens when you have to manage the whole thing. Right, so now it's the same deal, right? I'm going to come here and consolidate everything. So, and it's all down to how much pressure I apply to make certain things that we want to see, see seen and certain things that we want just to be suggested in the background, in the background, right? So now we can see. this shot here and if I really want to put the thick and thin on the bottom I can do it just like that right? how easy it is so eventually you've seen how this drawing has built up and I haven't really used an eraser to correct um, hey Alicia Shepard how are you I haven't really used an eraser I don't believe once to correct my drawings right um, the eraser has simply been used to knock things back so I can draw on top of my suggested placements for where things are right I may have erased out construction or perspective lines or things like that right but no erasing on the character drawing right no erasing on these things it's all ability what I call real animator ability that I'm trying to instill with you guys here um, Alicia Shepard will enjoy this more traditional inspired stream being a fan of traditional media so trying something new here with the some with by doing something old the old becomes the new right but I've been meaning to try and somehow share my 
pencil or next time we'll do pen I'll do a pen drawing for you but I've been meaning to try and share that process with you so you can see that everything I say on my streams when I talk about the software is not important and the line and all that is 100% intact because you've seen me now here do it with paper right and you've seen me do rough lines clean lines you haven't seen me put new layers right you haven't seen me free transform or flip objects you know you haven't seen me create brushes right all you've seen is some solid drawing right so there we are right so that's that now our friend has got to be put into practice here like this. Mm -mm -mm. Basil Paul Leros music. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, for me, it's if somebody said, what's the greatest film score ever done? Um, everything serves its purpose. So that's kind of like a, a wrong question. But I would be tempted to just say, I mean, you wouldn't see that working with Blade Runner or The Magnificent Seven, right? But I would just, everything needs a, a context, but I just can't help it. It's just the richness of Basil Balderos's Conan the Barbarian uh, music is just oh it's it's breathtaking to think that that was a, f a score to a film it's um it is above just general film score to, of course today's film scores are so interchangeable and so lacking in identity they literally are just muzak dramatic um or suspenseful muzak just stuff for the background Characters seldom have recognizable themes anymore. And that's another thing I want to do with my material is bring back storytelling in music. So um, when I say that, I love John Williams and Indiana Jones and everybody having recognizable themes, but something a little bit more subtle. Um... I guess you could say Conan the Destroyer, to those of you who know the film, was more like a John Williams, Indiana Jones fun mentality of film music and themes, whereas Conan the Barbarian was a little bit more like opera and uh, more elitist forms of art. Funny when the film was starring one of the most commercial actors ever, but it was early on in his career. Uh, speak of the great man Arnold um, who certainly even if you don't like him you'd have to say he is great because he is gargantuan in size so you can call him a great whatever right if you don't like him but I personally love him right so let's watch this here Like that. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. The funny thing is, I love Trevor Jones. The funny thing is, is, is I think Hans Zimmer is amazing, but he's just been exhausted, and like he's like they use his music a lot for this typical cliched music, but. He's been around since the 70s and 80s and just listen to his Prince of Egypt music. It is just, you know, Lion King, 
he gave the sound to the Lion King, the, bringing in the African thing, which was big. You had uh, the power of one, which in many ways was even better soundtrack than the Lion King. Um, so Hans Zimmer did Synthesizer in the 80s with Black Rain, and you know, um, very versatile, very gr a great composer, but it's just sad that when something becomes too mainstream and too popular and too overused, it then becomes cliched. I mean, Ennio Morricone's uh, Good, the Bad, the Ugly score is another great example of how the amazing original score just became comedic. You might be hearing rain in the back. I'm raising my voice. There's something therapeutic about drawing with the sound of heavy rain. It's quite a downpour. I'll just keep quiet while the rain blasts away there. It's good that we're talking about other things as well because some people are getting now more involved in the chat. Um, we've got people giving their opinions in the chat. Um, some of you might just be enjoying watching me draw, which is fantastic. Thank you very much. But do feel free to just, you know, this is kind of like a hangout session. So if you just want to talk, just talk in the chat, you know, as the drawing unfolds. Yeah. this in and then the the blue pencil will be what's used to really value uh, um, consolidate the values of the darks and the lights mm -hmm. this rain I don't know if you could hear it but I almost want to stop the stream and just start meditating. Perfect to meditate to. Kind of rain. Okay, let's go in here. Now I'll kind of like just kind of draw outline shapes suggested with this hair. So again, I'm changing the pressure of my pencil you make sure that this guy stands out but more so as an afterthought right. and I won't really care about being so tight with his line quality right so That comes out there now again here we've got some ripped garments I've got my rough design of that guy which I'm just kind of eyeballing and not even really trying to make it look right right so we've got a hand just something shapes because these are suggestive shapes in the dark now right that I'm just using All right so here I'll break this up a bit put a few brick lines and things just to make it sit in there right along here like that put some shapes of the floor which isn't even accurate right just here like this right? that's good enough now I might put a bit of detail on these arrows but not too much just a few lines now before I go thinking about the floor I want to just step back and have a look at that mm -mm. Alan Menken's score on the Little Mermaid is outstanding 
it's um, awesome all right so now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change just subtly from drawing with the point I'm not gonna do it like this I'm gonna hold it but I'm gonna change the way I draw these stones by almost it's not I, I, I don't have a smudge stick and I'm not drawing with a smudge stick but it's almost like I want to just reinforce these stones on the floor and I'm going to where I put the cracks like that is Charlene what's Charlene on the stream today she's normally quite active in the chat she's uh, must have gone somewhere maybe she's not so into what we're doing today but that's all right she might just be busy normally she's always chatting away there um, but it's good we've got some new people in the stream well not new people old friends uh, who I haven't seen for a while like Cody Bob who's um, making himself his opinions known which are most welcome in the chat so here again now just improvising along the floor right really doesn't matter because I'm gonna throw in some dorks here but just shapes right I just want shapes so it doesn't matter I just want shapes in my drawing I don't know why I felt like doing that but uh, it's funny um, I don't know how many of you have worked in a studio environment but people tend to get a little bit crazy and just do stupid things like that when you're drawing and I don't know I could do it more so when I'm working traditionally yeah, probably because I'm a I'm at my happiest I'm just at my happiest when I'm drawing on paper and pencil and what I love about well I mean we'll see how this stream goes we'll see if people want more um, let me know in the chat if you'd like to see more of these kind of streams and I'll seriously look into upping my equipment to get better lighting and uh, somehow getting a camera set up to do it um, but it seems like there is a it, there's a lot of interest in going back to the traditional media I'm getting a lot of questions about that so it did spark off my uh, interest in starting this doing this screen all right so I've kind of laid down the blues right and it's um, awesome people are asking for more I was drawing some cartoon kitties and now drawing t -Rex. <laughs> yeah that's good people people are liking this okay so so that's good right so now I'm gonna start just making things read a bit more making things stand out getting uh more blue in there so we eventually start getting this look right um so let's do that again first i'm gonna and i'm gonna have to start reinforcing things like the arrows are getting lost but it's okay right so I'm going to start making my skeleton stand out, right? Which is the important thing. I'm going to come in here and around him. We're going to start shading all around there. To make that guy stand up see right. so 
So just scribble, scribble. Then here I'm going to get darker, right? Around the sides. So more suggestive, but then I'm gonna bring that in here like that. Just soften that a little bit with my finger, so it will help him stand out even more. Right. And if I want to come back and um, again, this is a the, the this is a good way to stage if you just want to fudge things. Shade if you just want to fudge things. I wouldn't be doing all really. Um, I wouldn't recommend shading like this if you wanted to create a a realistic pencil drawing or something like that, right? It's a lot of fun to smudge and be suggestive and erase with light, but it only in these kind of suggestive um, situations, right? You don't really want to. There's there's different ways for doing different things right so just gonna come in here and make the lower stand out a bit get darker around here there we go how's that looking mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the funny thing is, is you all hear me talking about some, a great guy I work with called Uli Meyer, right? He shared on his Instagram that um, he was the animation supervisor for the small, there was a small sequence in Chippendale that was traditionally animated, trying to make it look like the TV series. So I didn't even know that they had actually hired some high caliber people to work on that film because... Again, you can't really judge a film by the trailer, but the trailer just the, the quality looks so bad that um, I had no idea that they've um, they had some good people on that. Okay, still I won't watch it. Um, all right, so that's that. So I'm leaving the skeleton guy in white at the moment, um, and now over here. I'm going to really darken this up. Over here like that. Keep that dark. Darken this. So when we were working on Tales of Despero, even though it was a, a CG animated movie, for some reason they wanted the storyboards to be done like this. And we were given a quota of 10 panels a day, right? Um, which some people thought was completely pointless, but I loved it because if you love drawing, you were just being paid to just draw and have fun right um but uh of course on other productions you get it's like more like 50 to and in some cases 100 panels a day you know, 50 panels 50 panels a day right so it all depends um on the project you're working on the the reasoning behind it, you know, production budget, production time, and all these kind of things. You see, I'm kind of leaving some bits in red and some bits in blue to help that. Well, let's turn that this way. Bring this down here. So, Eventually, the way this is going to work is, is I'm going to marry the 
shaded, smudged in backgrounds with the characters so they all meld together um, and we just strengthen a few choice lines to make everything read and register and stand out, right? So already we're kind of getting that effect here. I might bring my body eraser here and just streak along our guy like this and streak on the head and shoulders of our guy here to make that stand out. Mm -mm. <laughs> right now um, we want to make our figures in the dark stand out so I'm just going to shade a little bit darker particularly around this figure here so we see something of a temple wall here not too much right and then behind the temple wall we're gonna go super super dark but then have it soften away like that that's gonna kind of help that stand up again not too much we don't want to um, now here I'm gonna get the side of my red and I'm just gonna kind of glaze this figure like that right? and then we're gonna get I'm gonna use that glazing to help him stand out here like that gives him just something in the background that we don't really want to focus on but it's just there we're gonna sit it in the dark like that So we have that. I will pick out the, I will do the fine picking out later, right? We're just going to have that like that for now. And the same thing I'm going to do with the foreground element. I'm going to come in and I'm going to glaze this quite heavy. All right. And I'm kind of doing it, like, before I do it like this, I'm kind of doing it like this now, right? That's giving me some deeper darks to work with here like that. And I will just change my grip. It's a pretty Hung Ming Hui doesn't attend these streams anymore I think the time difference he's in Vietnam um, the time difference is not favorable for him but he would have liked this looking at all these the various um, grips of the pencil which he was obsessing over back when he was a more active member of the community but of course he's been through school now and his parents wanted him to do something more in their opinion reliable so wherever you are Hung Ming Hui I remember you buddy um, Hervonia Baker somebody mentioned Hervonia Baker the lovely Hervonia Baker has joined us I'm gonna have a look at the chat in a minute before uh, continuing with this so I've kind of like you see how now the background just kind of happened we didn't try it just kind of happened and now we've got the characters are popping and standing out but they're looking a little detached from the background now we could use shadow to bring them together I don't want to cast a shadow which I will do I'll kind of like again just use a little bit of more dark down here to help our guy fit in but 
I'm treating this almost like traditional animation with the characters going to be placed on top of the background, but they're just going to look nice. AMB, what's the character thinking in, uh, during this ghastly scene? Um, at first, he doesn't know what to expect. He knows that there's great feral here. Um, he knows that this is an abandoned ruin. Uh, his initial thought is, um, even though he's a, a meditative guy, a subdued guy, his initial thought is shock. Because he values life above all, you know, he's uh, got kind of Buddhist tendencies. So when he sees um, this carnival of death, as Cody Bob put it, with the, it's just strung up for display. And then this is like a look of sadness, disgust, confusion, um, tragedy like almost like the, such a waste such a tragic waste of life um is, is what he's thinking so now he's here he's more like okay i know what to expect i'm he's looking around it's very dark he can't quite see um moy no there's no reason it has to be in red and blue i just like drawing that way um so he's looking around um then here he gets he's about to step on something he doesn't want to shatter the hand so he's very controlled he's very warrior like in his lifting of his leg because he's um he's uh you know i don't want to damage whatever's down there and there he sees it is indeed uh, the shell of a baboon warrior um, so he's just standing there thinking the same thing he's almost wanting to pay his respects um, to um, to that so um, hopefully that uh, that was a great question uh, thanks thanks for um, asking it um, let me just see in the chat before I continue. Um, it's 2 hours 17 minutes. Um, when is this going to be a real movie? Okay, awesome. Well, if, if, people, if people actually help me fund it and make it, then it certainly can be a real movie. I mean, if you look at Netflix, they fund this god-awful, typical, you know, Kung Fu Panda, pixar -y style um, rabbit Ujimbo based on a French comic. Now, who really likes that? Really, I mean, if you really like it, write in the chat that you really like it. If you want more of the same of that trash, then, you know, but but I, I did something with Little Red. I tried to get some funding. Maybe nobody really wanted that to be seen. I'm still, I'm, I'm still hopeful that that will get funding. Um, but, uh, I'm just continuing doing my thing, so um, I will be launching a Groundhopper funding campaign at some point. So this thing can very realistically be made. Um, all it takes is, a, you know, if a million people donated a dollar, we could make something great, right? Or even if um, 500,000 people donated a dollar, right? Think how many views or whatever we could really make something great. So um, it's not that hard if you think about it. Uh, people talking about Chip and Dale, I don't want to get involved in that. Um, talking about old movie, old movies. Mm -hmm. Hervonia Baker has come online. Hervonia, I talked about keeping things in within the frame and keeping it on size. It's a lot easier when uh, when we're working on paper. So this stream is staying up, Hervonia, so feel free to, to watch it when you can. 
thank you, Alicia Shepherd. Um, I will get many people involved with the sound. I I do have my own man that I use. Uh, he's he's been a friend of mine for a very long time. But uh, definitely, the more the merrier. Um, Let's see what's going on here. Was pushed in a more reliable way of thinking. He stood the test of time with comics. Well, the red and blue pencil is often used. I don't want to do go. I don't have a GoFundMe page. The thing is, is it's funny how I'm trying to create like I'm trying to set examples for independent creators. I don't use Patreon. I don't use GoFundMe. I don't use platforms. Um, I use social media platforms, but I definitely set up my own funding pages, my own things um, to do that. Uh, but uh, it looks like, you know, um, so I with Little Red, I just set up my own funder. Um, and maybe I might have to go a more conventional route with Groundhopper. But then a lot of money used for the production will be will be wasted on uh, on the funding rev rewards, right? The thing is, is I was of the mind where like if people really want to see something, the end product should be what should be what they're paying for. But I think people get carried away with as I contributed a dollar and I want my little gift for that, and I contributed ten dollars and I want my little gift for that. You know, if those ex, uh, expenditures were spent on the actual budget of the film and getting better people in to to contribute towards it i think it would be you know we'd all be better off for it but obviously with little red that didn't really appear to happen but i as i said i've i've got a gut feeling that we haven't seen the last of little red um well groundhopper hasn't got a funding page yet okay um i want to get it to a certain stage before um i have a i have a link on my little red video if people want that to be made where you know i've even spent a fair deal advertising it um uh because i believe in it so much so if people want to fund it, they can uh, they can click on the link. Okay, so now I'm kind of like giving this guy some shading, right? But not necessarily true shading, just the kind of shading to make him pop, but sit in the background, right? And I will have to heavy his line just a little bit more once more just to finalize but you can see he's kind of like now now I'll shade around his arm and around his hand between here between here just to make him pop right but then sit amongst there so we're almost done well, that's again, so I'm thinking if we are going to fund, I'm going to have the entire storyboard journal available for people who put a decent amount in, right? So these are rewards that I'm kind of thinking of that we can do. Um, but uh, yeah, the, all these projects will happen. I have no doubt they're going to happen. So... The thing is, is um, the only thing that will stop them from happening is if I stop, right? Um, which certainly isn't going to be the case, right? So it's like um, this drawing. If I close the book now, I got so close to the end, but that's it. I can never do it again and that's it. It's gone forever. But if I continue, even if after a year I might open this and go, oh, okay, well, let's continue. It'll be finished. Everything gets finished as long as you keep doing it, right? As long as we keep on keeping on, right? So for me, 
Little Red is fully funded, okay, in my own wonderful human imagination. And that will eventually um, be reflected in this reflective earth, which we consider to be reality. So it's just a matter of time. Now, um, just going to create some shapes, some definite shapes on him. to bring him into the fold All right. I'm gonna dark that I'm gonna dark that dark it's a difficult thing to explain, but the pressure that I'm scribbling with, I call it shading, but scribbling with, is varying all the time as I'm taking in the sensibilities of the sketch. And for a storyboard panel, this is an awful long time to be spending on a rough sketch, right? But... Um, as I said, this really, really doubles up for me as a piece of concept visual development sketch, right? It's sort of a little way between. And in a way, like I prefer doing it like this to the way I was doing it with the Photoshop paintings that you all remember. Before I uh, come out of this, um, this... Uh, stream um, before I come and heavy these up right and just finalize this drawing what I might do is just to refresh you so what I'm doing here is not much different to what you see at the earlier stages now some of you have seen this before but some and maybe you'd like to see it again but I'm gonna play the ground hopper um, first kind of half or quarter or third like the first act is he's climbing the mountain the second act is he goes into the temple and the third act is is he has the battle with the great one right those who don't know who the great one is this is the great one right the great one is sitting somewhere in this temple while this guy's walked in here talking to this skull right so We've just got, I've just got a little bit of, um, I'm almost done with this drawing, but I think it'll be nice, like, to just show you a little bit of that groundhopper thing. So just bear with me. Where is the groundhopper animatic? It would be in 2021. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Um.
Right, right. So, um, obviously he'll... There's a, there's a few shots after that. Um, I've got the rough sketches here. I'll just find them. Um, but you can see, actually, so those paintings took as long to do as these drawings here. So they're all me kind of roughing out the sketch storyboard art. So here, what happens next is he goes up to the the door and he sees these marks on the door and he puts his hand on the door and um, and then you kind of see his face and the hair I've written here but there'll be no dialogue okay but I've written this for the emotion he says I sense great sorrow here right and then so we see him looking and he looks at his hand and he readies his fist um, and then we got a shot here where he kind of opens the door or he's just waiting there and as he opens the door it blacks and then you kind of like then we got to this sequence here where I've switched over from the painting because I just I, I think it's just better and more productive for me to work this way because the character like as Charlene points out Groundhopper is he's, he's evolved you know uh, the great one is such a great design as a it's kind of like a battle between the two, so I felt that he was so much stronger than the earlier, more kind of Samurai Jack looking Groundhopper, which was a fusion of Samurai Jack and uh, Disney kind of Bluth drawing. Now I've gone all out to this more kind of uh, traditional kind of drawing. That's the way I like to draw. So I've had to up him. I've had to up him so he can stand up to the tiger. He's got beefed up a bit. He's got buffed like if this was Street Fighter. So he's opened the the door and here we've seen me drawing, explaining all this. He's walked in and now inside he's seen all these um, these uh, skeletons and he's walking around and you know he's about to tread on one. And we've just seen me. I'm gonna finish this. I'm almost done. But I just thought another thing to explain is some of you might have seen the horse the horsemen that were um the horse statues so i was even trying to rough out ideas of what the ancient race who initially built that temple were and kind of like roughing ideas of the impaled warriors how they would have been um impaled um you know what what other tiger warriors look like this is a hint as to the great one and his his background you know Yes, he is the antagonist. Yes, he is a, you could say, the villain. But um, I want, I want this to be extremely deep. I don't want him to just be a card-carrying villain. I want people to watch this, and um, you know, really start asking questions. Really start having empathy for the great one. Actually, right. So let me now um, just tidy this up one final time to tie it together it's almost tied together but things are getting a little bit lost in the in the scribbles um, so first I'm gonna get my eraser and again the lighting would not really be like this but we're just trying to make things pop so I'm gonna get my eraser and highlight certain things just to make them stand out then we're going to was the great one's mentor i'm not going to tell you it's 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 horrible it's uh, that's all i'm going to say everybody's going to if you don't feel something for the great one when it all ends you got a heart of stone sometimes like i sit there my wife's like have you got tears in your eyes like and i'm like yeah she says what's the matter and then she, when I tell her, she just rolls her eyes. Oh, because like, there's a piece of music by the Greek composer Yanni called Prelude. Um, and so take a note of that and listen to it. I, I, I'll I'll get I'll get. Uh, I think the the music from Shenmue nobody cares about, so I never get flagged for for playing that animatic. But I was listening to Prelude, and Prelude is by Yanni the world music composer and i think of the great one's backstory and what brought just 
his name is the great one right why is he rotting in this place you know what is he doing here he doesn't belong here right why is he here right and um he's obviously not a savage right well he's done savage things but he's he's quite shakespearean in some regards he's very well spoken he's the great one okay so i want these if you just to bring you know people like what they like but there's a show some of my friends are contacting me they're a little concerned i'm saying thank you but i don't care like we live in independent times they're going have you seen this uh you your jimbo thing they're doing a a, a a rabbit it's on netflix what do you think about that i don't think anything about it it's it's got nothing to do with my show it's completely different i mean if you just look at it it's for me it's the same old banal trash it's just insincere you know patronizing for the kiddies um kind of stuff um so hopefully people will see what I'm trying to do. And I think traditional animation lends itself to a less doll-like, giddy-witty um, medium. So I think, you know, um, I'm going to try to tell the kind of stories that I want to tell. Um, so here I'm just making these arrows and things stand out, right? So anyway, it's always fun sharing this um, project with people. And one of the things I like to do is I always like to set the example that I, I claim to be or that I'm teaching and... Um, no, my wife, my wife does know what happens to the great one, but I guess she was worried about me. She thought that I was, something happened at home or whatever. So he's just thinking about the groundhopper. <laughs> right. Um, right, so now I'm going to heavy these foreground elements. And as a story man, if you start getting really involved with the characters in your story, then you know you're on to something special and um, something that so again just heavying the lines of things that I want to bring in the foreground even though I'm heavying these lines some of these lines I will knock back by putting shadow on them okay to make it sit on the ground just a, a little bit better right which is what we want to do so this is how we kind of tie all of this together ba -ba -bum. but the thing is it's Cody Bob I don't claim to be telling adult storytelling um, I watched uh, Ralph Bakshi, Lord of the Rings, when I was a kid. It was, you know, the Lord of the Rings books were considered children's books, right? Charles Dickens, Great Expectations, Graveyards, kids running around. You could say it was different times where kids had to deal with life and death a lot more than what they do now, and why should we subject them to that? I'm not against anybody's ideology. I'm not here to debate ideology with anybody um, whatever, you know, if people don't like their kids seeing more somber stuff like Dickens and uh, Lord of the Rings, then don't show it to them. It's your responsibility and I respect that. But I grew up um, in a world where, uh, you know, even Mumra in the Thundercats was a creepy corpse and he was, he had this insane demonic laughter. It's, you can laugh at it as an adult, but as a kid, that's quite, that's quite disturbing. Um, so, and I saw Conan the Barbarian obviously wasn't a kid's film. It had a lot of nudity and um, uh, sexual references to it and all that. So I can't pretend that that was somehow for kids. But I saw that at an early age. Um, I saw lots of things. And... 
I think if kids were to see a film like Grave of the Fireflies as well, in a world where everybody's trying to pretend that certain things didn't happen in history, you're kind of... I understand the flip side. I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to make people color blind, this blind, that blind. And there is a there is a valid argument for that. Like, let's start from scratch again. Let's reprogram people's minds. So as I said, I'm not here to say who's right and who's wrong. But we've all got points of view. And my point of view is, is that um, I think let's not forget what happened. Let's not forget and let's show kids a film like Grave of the Fireflies where these these two kids who you can really relate to a really cute sweet loving loving little girl and her brother they're just really sweet but you're 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 watching the movie and you 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 see yourself in those kids and you feel so much empathy for them but you feel so sad it's just so sad and it's so powerful um for it and i think you know Animation is a medium that is, you know, instantly recognizing and appealing to children. And that's also a way to to really help build character and foundations and not just have, you know, Spongebob, that sounded more like Popeye, but Spongebob Squarepants laughing and insincerity. And my wife said to me, why won't you watch Frozen with me? Why? What, what is your problem? Why? Why don't you give it a chance? You gave How to Train Your Dragon a chance. I said, because there was some sincerity in that. I, I'm not going to watch a film where it's based in a period piece, but the guy feels like an American football team jock soccer star waiting for his scholarship, and the princess feels like a prom queen, but happened to be dressed in fantasy medieval clothing. No, Pocahontas doesn't feel like a prom queen. John Smith doesn't feel like a football jock. Why do we have to patronize audiences with these cultural references to say that it makes them more relatable? Relatable to who? Um, so I'd, th it's not my kind of filmmaking, not my kind of storytelling. I want to relate to as many people from as many cultures. I want to relate to the humanity, the human in people, not people from a certain country that happen to, you know understand what the prom is because frozen for me feels like a film about a a girl wanting to go to the fucking prom i'm not interested in you know why is it set in that time period why for what purpose they don't it all feels like a cosplay an animated cosplay where everything is got modern references to it like it's just it's so insincere um again there's a market for it, which is why it's so successful, so fantastic. But that's not why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, so the beauty of all this is we can make the projects that we really want to make. Okay, so almost done. Um, almost done with that. Let's try and have you... Let's try and recreate the effect that we will be seeing so the camera will kind of pan up you'll all get to see this i'll take a photo of it and post it on my social media but um let's um yeah as i said that's your idea of responsible parenting and i respect that um i i, I certainly would show it to my youngsters because i want them to understand that what goes on in the world you play these video games where you're you're uh, blowing people up um and unfortunately the games are getting less about fantasy they're about i'm not one of these people that say these games should be banned but it's fun to play those games i'm not against them but if you're going to be blowing people up then this movie shows you what happens when you go blowing people up. Um, I'm all about action and peril. I think movies is a great place to have that rather than the real world. Um, so it's exciting. It's fun. I get it. But um, I, 
I think personally think Grave of the Fireflies is one of the most significant animated movies ever made. Um, it's it's just marvelous, absolutely marvelous. I never really. It's such an an older film as well, and I never even bothered watching it and that was my bad but i'm so happy that i've seen it now because after all these years um it gives me something to be excited about because nothing disney or dreamworks have made um has given me that all right so i'm just bringing this guy in the foreground by detailing his shading just a little bit more and the one final thing that I'm going to do to tie all this together is um, just darken around certain areas of the join. And what are we? Two hours, 47 minutes. Since I haven't drawn a face, I might do the next panel, but not fully shaded, right? I might do the next panel so you can see how I draw his face, right? So that ties that together. I'm going to kind of notice how I change the direction so I can just get it darker like that. That brings that yeah. oopsie and i nearly forgot there i am talking about doing the next panel i nearly forgot to make this guy just stand up a bit there we go not too much all suggestive bring that so I've got this square here that's extra light right I want to take that down a bit right so I might keep that just with the blue why is there too much light there we don't want we want the light on the skeleton more so than that we can bring him all in the background there like that so this is just framing everything nicely right we're just framing everything nicely so this is what makes it all picturesque. I could stop. The drawing has served its purpose. I don't need to do this. But this is just for the pleasure of it. Right? This is just for the pleasure of it. My daughter won the most curious award <laughs> for her ceremony. Also. Um, all right so we'll just darken that right there we go um that is that you could keep fiddling and playing with this for eternity but it is done i'm just creating dark shapes now to help that and uh, right. it's almost like using a gradient tool in Photoshop, right? Almost like using a gradient tool to help this stuff stand out. The weak aspect, which I didn't think about, so if I was going to critique this from a composition point of view, but then it doesn't matter. So it's not weak for what it is, right? It's weak if, if I was going to frame this, what makes this weak is how this and this, these three arrows and these three arrows are too much in line with each other, right? 
but we got to remember what this is this is a camera move so let me try to recreate this with a piece of paper so really we'll be looking at it like this right we'll be looking at the shot like that or if I you know as I said I don't want to start with his feet right at the bottom so really when you do these kind of drawings you're not doing it just for a beautiful drawing right we're looking at that so that's in itself is a strong composition right you see the hand here you see the feet they're a little bit too much in line perhaps and you know but everything here is a nice composition then as the camera kind of pans up right that's a nice composition right that's a nice composition that's a nice composition right so this drawing has to work composition wise so i was calling it weak but it's fucking strong which is why i know what i'm doing which is why i thought about all these things when i did that yesterday is as you see all these lines is you got to think in terms of composition for that all right so we have got two hours yeah you could do many things uh cody bot i'm gonna keep the stream running for a little bit longer if you don't mind um uh so i'm gonna have i'm just gonna create another panel let's do another panel all right here and here so you're just hanging out with me today how many did i make that i made that seven all right so seven deadly sins seven ways to win seven holy paths to hell and you're back again so we have that that goes like this all right and we're gonna come down with a six and i'm not necessarily doing this as as uh, the framing of the true um 16 by 9 or 5 by 7 or 1080p or whatever um because as i said this is um these are just rough drawings that I'm going to put in a nice little book and use for crowdfunding as well. So they're just filling the sketch page. That's all it is. Bum, bum, bum. So hopefully that helps with that. Right. So we have got that. I don't need to do that again. So now we're going to look at composition again for a close up. And I kind of roughed it out here. So you'll see the low angle of the character's head. We don't want to draw... Everything's kind of low angle. Um, we're keeping the camera low. Even though like a low angle can make the guy look powerful. It's also doing something else. It's also making the surroundings seem big. Right? So that's what all of this is about. So everything's kind of low to that point so this is a drawing that we're going to do uh, but I'm going to push it just like I did with this one here right so I've got my reference there so again I want to kind of think of uh, Jeremy Jones or Cody Bot the the third rule is kind of coming in here I want to fit the head into this kind of thing here but I don't want it to be, I want it to be close up, but perhaps not as close up. And I want it to be more of a steep angle. So I'm going to think of something like this. All right. And we got his neck here. His chest will be out here like this. All right. And then I think about the hood of his jacket because it's important for composition. So this is a little three quarter, too much three quarter. I think I want it more square on because I just think it'll be more powerful. So this expression is going to be different to 
this one. Um, not this one, this one here. So here he might be thinking to himself something like, Warrior, though long dead, you are still an opponent to be reckoned with. Or something like that. Right? going to be thinking of something like that. Now, I have to think about the back of his ears, right? And the angle that that would make and cheating that. So we've got something like this now. The drawing is a little bit lopsided at this stage, but it's okay. And then I want to think about the ceiling perspective. So I'm just going to kind of just put in a little bit of grid like that. Right? Not too much. Right? Kind of gives them a higher portion. So now I'm going to rough in where his eyes are going to be. So there'll be one here, one here like that and his mouth is all quite sincere and subtle but I want to have not anger more somber sadness so I'm trying to get that with the eyebrows and the mouth before I start thinking about the nose right so this character is a difficult character because his nose comes down like this. So when you're looking at an up angle, you can't really give him an up snout like that. So his snout would maybe be about here. If you want to think there's a bit of a curl. All right. So his snout would be something like this. Again, how am I holding my pencil? See? All right. So then here I'm going to think about the frontal bone of the face, the zygomatic bone of the face. All right? As I start chipping away, it's like a clay block that I'm starting to chip away. Just because I drew that shape doesn't mean the head is going to be in that shape. Now his jaw, right? is going to come here on either side like that giving me a sense of his perspective right so under his his mylohyoid would be here coming into the neck right then he's got his cheeks which give him his identity which we are going to kind of cheat they're kind of flat but we cheat them out so at the moment this head is very construct construction based. Um, want me to push my musket, but can't go any higher than that. Because right here is my laptop that I do all my work, my traditional medium on. This is a webcam, a laptop webcam that I'm using. Hopefully that helps you see what I'm doing. Uh, but thanks for letting me know, Charlene. Um, Right, so now um, his collarbone will be here, right? We want to get the center line like this, right? His collarbone is here, right? And his shoulders will be here, but he's wearing his garment, right? Which I can just rough now I want to think about the nice shape of the garments like that so we have something like that and his ear this is going to be like a triangle point where we're kind of going away on either side so you see the diamond that I talk about being used there right and his nose is going to come in and sit in there somewhere like that, right? No, I've got my laptop right in front of me, Kevin Silver. Um, 
ba -ba -bum. So then here is like that. Right. Now I'll put a little duft of hair over to the side like that. Right. So we've got something like that which looks a little robotic at the moment but it helps me with the angle because this is a, an up angle and I want to get that in the character. Um, so the next pass I'm going to think more about drawing the character's face, right? I can keep that. Yeah, like this. So the first thing I'm going to think about is his eyes, right? Remember, I want to think of a line, some kind of line like warrior, though long dead, you are still an opponent to be reckoned with, right? So I, at the moment, as I'm drawing his eyes, I don't know, it's difficult to see in the red, faint red, right? I'm really trying to get that with his eyes, right? So we don't just get some angry or somber eyes with the eyebrows. I wanna speak with the eyes, right? So this is gonna kinda of sail up. I've had I've thinned his eyebrows down a little bit. I love the thick eyebrows, but I want, I don't want him to have such heavy eyebrows. Um, I'll save that for the AMV lady, right? Um, so his eyebrows are more narrow. Um, ba -ba -bum. I, I, I always use desktop and laptop. I can't stand mobile devices for work. Right, so now the nose has got a slight curl here, not too much of a curl. Right, so we're going to have the nose come here. So I'm really just trying to speak. Now this is just a straight line that we're going to put a few little squiggles on like that. I'm really just trying to speak with his eyes at the moment, right? Now the mouth. I want the mouth to maybe just go off to one side a little bit, right? As if he's A little bit annoyed about what he's seeing. Right. I'm not framing it. I'm I'm leave leaving it. I'm not joining that line. Right. It's tempting to want to join the line, but I'm giving him a bottom lip, and. I'm going to make his mouth a little bit smaller because it's hand drawn, we can do that. Which gives the expressions a little bit of appeal that CG can't quite have. So here his muzzle is going to be, right? So we just put a little line there like that, right? So I'm at the moment I'm really liking what I'm getting with the expression. Um, whereas you kind of see... In the, with the original rough it's nice but it's it, it doesn't have the depth right so I'm really trying to get that depth of expression now this is the eye mask right comes around like this and it's it goes into where the cheeks to the bottom of the mouth like this but we want to think of his jaw which comes out at the side so we're just going to give him this kind of cheek shape which comes like a triangle out now this this flattens the character but that's the design 
and I kind of like it. Gives it that nice old school cartoon feel. And we're going to come in here and frame, give him a bit of a chin by framing that with some fur like this. Helping that up angle, right? So then here we're going to do the same thing, right? But then we're going to put the fur up and out like that right so that unifies him with the neck area which is gonna come like that now the head we're going to bring that to that triangular point right and bring that straight so this is going to give him dimension so his head is going to be traveling backwards his skull is going to be traveling backwards like this right so that's his zygomatic arch and his bone would be there it's traveling backwards we're going to bring it a little bit out to frame the face a little bit then we're going to bring those cheeks down and around there like that for into the trapezius so just just this square line here this triangle here frames that and helps the up angle of the chin right so the same we want to do around this side we want to think about his fur coming out here like this and for me doing these drawings really helps finalize the character because you saw me doing a lot of illustrations colored in photoshop and clean lined with him doing all these fighting poses and these generic smiles they may have been finished but, but this is where the character design is really going to be strengthened for me is when we start playing with his facial expressions when they actually have a meaning and a purpose and so even that turnaround that you saw me do that very detailed full model turnaround this is all stages for helping me understand his head and, and all that but it doesn't mean that the character is designed right fully so you can see as I'm drawing him here it's the same guy all right and he's, he's on model but every time i'm getting better i'm getting deeper and that's what all this is about right so here he'll have a few strands of hair coming off the sides his ears coming back on themselves like this Maybe put another ear up there, cheat that other ear up there. It's very flat, but that's what I like. It looks nicer than if it was a 3D model. We may not even see those ears properly. So that's the beauty of the medium, right? So this comes here. Again, Whether I've worked with 3D um, animation in the computer, but, I, you know, um, just playing around with clay the other day made, made, made it even better. So 3D does actually help you, uh, even though I'm into drawing and I don't enjoy 3D and it's all about drawing, I believe everyone who wants to do to up their game in drawing should at some point play around with a 3D sculpture, whether it's in the machine or whether it's with clay. After doing it with clay, I personally recommend it more with clay because you're literally hands-on and you're going around the the thing, sculpting with your hands, and it's just more tangible and you you can really feel the. So if you have a problem visualizing angles from your imagination and from your head, um, definitely play around with a bit of clay sculpting. I think it really really helps um it really helps us helps you improve that aspect i really like that expression i really really am happy with that drawing um 
Does Groundhopper carry a weapon? No. He can use weapons, but he doesn't carry a weapon. No. Um, he will use... He doesn't like to carry instruments of the instruments of destruction, tools of power played, instruments of destruction. <laughs> Ten points if you know what I'm trying to sing. I love the bit when the guy's voice goes, instruments of destruction. <laughs> I'm, in fact, after this stream, I'm going to just listen to that and laugh. It's a great song. I love hard rock and heavy metal, but just the way the guy's changes his voice just for that right so anyway no he doesn't carry instruments of destruction with him he has learned all these things to master his body and fight his his inner being his his external being so he has learned to master his body but he He's not really that type of guy. Right, so I've got a little bit of ceiling here, which would be so black, but I roughed it out because it's literally, you know, this would be just blackness. But again, I'm going to just put suggested shapes to kind of help me think in the future about what the bricks of the ceiling would look like. So it's it's a very high ceiling as well, but this is a especially low angle. It's almost like we're looking back up at him from from this point of view, right? So again, I'm just going to create random shapes that are gonna represent a sort of ceiling. But this panel, which is why I decided to do it, is very much about the close-up of the guy's face. So, um, not much thought work going into that. But again, you, even the simple things like, even though this is all blackness, simple things like the ceiling design and the the way the lines are going on the bricks are all to help the composition right right which i will push even more um, when i start to build that right okay so let's Tidy up the guy's face. So we bring this all back and we're gonna clean this drawing up. The instruments of destruction. You've got me going now. <laughs> Does anybody even know what that is that I'm singing? Um, if Zentron, he's gone probably. Eva of destruction. Yeah, no, now April Chan. It's from the original Transformers, the movie, from the 80s. Um, <laughs> Google it. Instruments of Destruction. Yeah, too proud. He's not proud. He's certainly not proud. He, he, he has pride like everyone else, but he's, he'll, he's certainly not too proud to fight with a weapon. Um, Right, this time before doing the silhouette of the character, this is all different for me. The most important aspect is the guy's expression. So, I'm working that. So we have that here. I've really enjoyed today's live stream. Uh, I wonder 
how you guys have felt about it. Of course, one of the options for a funding, if we were to fund, would be certain people who contributed a certain amount would be able to witness the film being made with these kind of live streams. So we may go into the story department on one live stream. We may go into the animation department, another live stream. Um, have Zoom or FaceTime live streams with, because certainly live fantasy, um, maybe I'll get Octavio Velasquez involved. I think he's now reaching the level where I feel he'd be able to do a few things. Dylan Dorster would certainly be able to assist and in between on this project at the very least so we could have streams where we talk to people look at what they're doing travis the insta animate you know i want to get real animated training people involved that's what all this is about is creating real animator studios um so the people who go through the training then go on to work on the productions so um that's what this is all about so if you like the stream it's a taste of what's likely to come once these things start getting made I will always be there to share what I'm doing but it'll be good to see what some of the other people who will be involved if we have the budget we'll have the art director talking about the backgrounds about a lot better than what I am you know because that would be their thing. Um, yes. But even at this stage, I have tried to share the development process. Um, <laughs> yeah, but thank you, Dylan and Octavia, but you put in the work, you know, you put in the work. Um, and everybody who gets to work on this thing, like I love everybody, especially people who have taken the time to follow me and invest in my training and all that. But I'm very much like these things have to be... Um, you earn your position, you know, it's not out of just favoritism or anything like that. If people are going to be involved, it's going to be back to the old school, the, the Disney portfolio mentality, the, you know, if you're involved in, in real animated projects, you know, you'll have earned the, the title real animator to be involved with these projects, you know, uh, that's, that's pretty much. The kind of thing I want to get, want to get going, but want to get drawing. Um, this live stream has been super interesting. We're almost done, Caleb. Thanks for joining. Um, I, I actually am, you know, I was going to hire someone to make a 3D sculpture of this character to give away as um, like what the classic animation busts. If, if this thing is going to be funded. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but then after playing with Clay myself and learning about Sculpey, I may want to just do that, my, just have, do that myself for fun. It's not as hard as I thought it was. But then again, I haven't tried to bake it. <laughs> it's one thing laying around with the clay but then baking it's a different thing and you know I've got all these intentions to pick up my paintbrush and do some traditional painting again work with acrylic and gouache and, but really where should my energy be going should be going in these things and when I want to just do mindless stuff the AMB ladies there for that mm -mm -mm. Okay, well, the voice that I have in mind for Jang Tae Jin would be very much like 
David Carradine from the 1970s TV show Kung Fu. Um, very gentle, very gentle voice. Um, none of this fake sincerity um, style stuff that we see. Um, it would be a very, very gentle voice. Right, so let's get these ceiling stones. Put in there. Yes, yeah. I can imagine the whooshing, whizzing sound of an approaching arrow. No, doesn't happen here yet. He's too busy talking to his skeletons while this is going on. He's too busy talking to his skeletons. But it'll be quite special when he does show up and introduce himself to the groundhopper. Right. So let's talk values here. Um, so first and foremost, um, I am going to want him to stand out. So all of this has to be in darkness. Right. So that's the initial super dark. Now I'm going to go over to these areas and just throw in something. Again, we really wouldn't see anything. It would just be dark shapes. It's just dark ceiling. I've drawn the ceiling in a lot more than really just to give me a suggestion of the kind of you know, no, not enough real research has been done for a good ceiling anyway. So, but it's just to give me an idea of what I expect to be the ceiling. The ceiling itself is a potential to make the story even richer and deeper. So we shouldn't really take that as lightly. Um, <laughs> I want people to like the great one, Studio Anima. Right, so now I'm going to, a little bit of my blue from the previous drawing is on my finger, but I want that, that's cool. Now I'm going to just do the whole thing. All right. Now in here... I'm going to create a shape of shadow under his chin and darken that and glaze him like that and around here. Really his whole face should be shaded but I don't want that to be the case because it's just storyboard to make him pop as with previous so I'm just picking elements to complement and I'm using the side of my pencil to give him direction and dimension to his face right so we've got that right. 
little bit on the nose, not too much. Good. Right, so now it's time to get our friend the blue pencil. De Dylan Royer, what is the story called? It's a proposed series that I'm making. Uh, this will be the pilot. Um, I wouldn't say episode, it's a sequence. Like I would like to make an entire episode, but it's just a sequence. Um, this is... Um, the, the series will be called Groundhopper, the Legend of Jang Taijin, which is the name of this hare. He's not a rabbit, he's a hare. And his, um, his nickname is Groundhopper. His master called him Groundhopper. And um, this story... I've got many titles, but at the moment there's um, it's it's you know there's one that's called the Soul of the Mountain. So this is uh, the rough working title for this episode, Mr. Leon. Pretty nice to see the process twice. I'm glad you guys think the great one is creepy. Um, it, what I love about storytelling is even though like I, I'm giving the game away a little bit like is, is I love people to have preconceived ideas but then when when they watch the film they come out of it with a very different view. Yeah. There's no denying the great one is He's bad. I mean, what he's done is very, very bad. Um, uh, these people are warriors themselves. Why have they come to this temple? You know, but um, it's a celebration of death. What's going on in here? It's a carnival, a circus of death. Um, so there's no smoke without fire, but. Um, called the soul of the mountain so there's a little bit of um, and what it is is like you saw earlier the sequence where he's um, climbing the mountain so he's conquering the external mountain but then inside there's a, gonna be a huge mountainous tiger that's Initially, I didn't want it to be twice his size. I wanted it to be three times his size. <clears throat> but I think for purposes, I'm going to keep him twice his size. Oh, just about. So he'll have to do battle with another mountain within the mountain. Right? But hopefully the, the word soul of the mountain gives the game away that it's, it's not all going to be just violence for the sake of violence you know? the groundhopper is always in search of philosophy he's not um, the villain is simply called the great one that is his name He's not the villain of the series. Each episode will have a different set of perils. Um, there, there's an episode with a swamp king who is a amphibian-like creature. Toad, frog, uh, more tribal style character whereas the great one is like a mogul or a mongolian warlord 
So each episode in his travels for the meaning and purpose of life and his quest actually to find his sister who was taken from him at a very early age by a strange winged demon which he has very vivid dreams so that's the underlying reason for his traveling but it won't necessarily be the main plot point throughout the story it's just always running underneath there'll always be things people he encounters um, the swamp king uses a stick and he is such a badass the great one is great but you can't really say badass about him the swamp king is badass that's a different story entirely right so let's put a little bit of shade under his chin A bit of shadow here. And we'll just darken this up a little bit. There we go, right? So now we're just going to make him stand out. So very quickly along here. And I'm not using heavy lines at all. Just quick little strokes. Even more to give texture to the ceiling. Right. It's more cracks. If you're doing like things like floor, forest floors, trees, stonework, brickwork, things like that, you want to throw in like cracks and, you know, dents and just dress it up a little bit. It'll do the world of good and just make everything that little bit more believable, right? And also it gives you nice little cues of where to put more shadows right so i can make these kind of lines like this now i have more cues of where to put my shadows Three hours, 34 minutes. Wow. You see how time just goes when you're really having fun, right? It just goes. I've done four hour streams with you guys before. I'm almost done. Right? I didn't, I did say I was just going to do the rabbit, but it's just a lot of fun. The hero's name is Jang Taejin Groundhopper. He's known as the Groundhopper. And there's I'm going to deal with racism in this show, but not in a very in-your-face way. And in a way that, like, some people used to, when I was growing up, they gave me racial nicknames. Um, but it sounds weird to say it wasn't always extremely taken in a bad way right that's not what i'm i'm not focusing the show on racism but for example he's got long ears right so people are gonna call him long ears long-eared one and so it seems okay just because he's a rabbit oh rabbits or hares they've got long ears but he's being you know it's a derogatory term you know 
long-eared one long ears oi long ears come here so i'm gonna tackle all these kind of things in here but i'm not gonna do it in a way that it feels like i'm preaching or whatever i'm gonna do it in a way that makes the viewer generally feel uncomfortable about it rather than oh they feel they're being preached to or you know which it just feels in engineered in certain shows we all bring about what I think is important as a storyteller, as a director, is to, is to bring experiences that you've had in your life and share them in a genuine way to other people and not make it like, uh, not just try to check boxes or tick boxes or anything like that. So if I ever put anything like this in my shows, it's not going to be because I feel that that's the thing at the moment. That's the trend to, to jump on, you know. It's going to be more like, well, no, I want it in there because it's got a reason to be in there. And it's, I think it'll add richness to the story. It'll add flavor. It'll add depth and all these things. Right, so I want to make him stand out in the background at the moment. The background's not dark enough. So now I'm going to use my reds and pick out my darks right again if i was using black pencil it would you could do this a lot faster but as i said part of doing this is just my own therapeutic thing and it's got my own unique look to it um there's no rhyme or reason for doing it this way right but one of the reasons i like to do hand-drawn animation is drawing for me is the most pleasurable thing you know dare i say i prefer it to sex and i prefer it to food it's just for me the world's most pleasurable thing and um i can never get enough of it so i like when i would work long hours in the office um back in the days the studio days it would be voluntary it wouldn't be oh look at these whether the company was exploiting me and using me and not paying me enough i don't give a shit right i'm happy i'm doing what i like to do i'm doing what i love to do when when the industry stopped being about that and it was about not you know storyboards then started being about First, they wanted you to just scribble and rough them down and turn them over to CG for pre -vis. But then now they want you to import the model and just draw a rough sketch of the character on top and fiddle about with the 3D camera and with programs like Blender and Grease Pencil and all that. It's being even more encouraged now. So the industry is no place for me at the moment. If, if I ever am going to be in it, it's going to be at the forefront now creating content because they smell money out of me otherwise i'm not I, I i don't ever want to waste my skills and talents on those worthless productions that are being made now where no the drawing doesn't really doesn't unless you're a visual development artist um which is different to what you see me doing what you see me doing is drawing drama characters story scenario piecing it all together it's almost a little bit of everything but not really taken to its complete level it's like the it's like the the recipe which everybody else builds on which is what i love about storyboard um storyboard is just so so powerful it's this recipe that everybody builds on um that we don't really get to enjoy and appreciate anymore if you look at the old story sketches for movies like bambi fantasia and things like that the artistry was always at the forefront even if you look at um akira or miyasaki's uh, storyboards they're almost like anime comic panels for the film because they're these are auteur directors they're working out every shot um don bluth you look at his 
some of them are very loose but they're so well drawn and dramatic and he's got the lighting he's using um, black pen and ink and uh, there's no right and wrong way pencil is my chosen thing I like blue pencil I'm an animator I, I used to really treasure the drawings in the art of Disney books that were the blue pencil drawings by the animators so for me, um, the blue pencil, red pencil thing is very much um, just my way of uh, enjoying myself, enjoying what I do, loving what I do, and expressing it. So when the material gets put out there, when the material gets made, everybody will know that's an A and B board because AMB likes to work with blue and red pencil you know um, so that's just it it's got its look and I think it's really beautiful it's rough but it's not rough at the same time you could still put it on your wall and enjoy it right And in some ways, I think it's more artsy than the the digital paintings, which are very. Not, I'm not talking my digital painting ones. I'm talking about general. Digital paintings are beautiful. They're very competent. I'm not taking anything away from it, but I just like to draw that. How long is going to be done? Well, I mean, as I said, I'm I'm just working on it on my own. If I, at the very least, I will get the storyboard done, right? But if we can raise a budget, I may I may even think about when I get enough of the storyboard out there. Already, I've got a fair amount that's exciting. People like watching that animatic. I need to get. I can't use that music in the official release, even though that Shen Niu music is perfect for it. Um, I'll have to go to my guy to do some score, um, but uh, I could already try a crowdfunder just to finish the storyboard, right? But um, I want to take it a little bit further, I want to do a dialogue test, I want people to see the great one, I may do a dialogue test with the groundhopper so people can see how he talks and how he, who, you know, just be prepared for these characters in a little bit more as their story is unfolding right so there we go that is the um that is the panel that we have just done and you can see the ceiling effect looks quite convincing like that and then we've got this panel so again let me try and mimic the camera move so you see the composition there so the composition will be like that and the camera will pan up to him looking at it like that so the composition has to work in all ways right so uh, a good nice mornings uh, worth of work morning and afternoons worth of work so this thing is uh, this sketch pad is already starting to get somewhere now um, so uh, the groundhopper sketch pad we've got this 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 and this okay now we'll plot out the next page here the next drawing will be uh, a decent version of just a look just so you see where these look look how the, the original early idea is so bad but they're just the first things in my head, right? So, um, it's going to be a version of, bear with me, you all seen it, right? this so this this is what is an idea right it's all shaded and stuff but it's a sh really shit quick drawing of a thumbnail 
that I just wanted to get out in my head. So the which was originally just an adaptation of this. So the next panel we're going to pull out wide as a statement, just as an establishing shot, because from a staging point of view, he's inside a temple, but nothing is really established. No real establishing shot is like of the surroundings is done because I want you to be in it with him. Like, what am I looking at here? What are we looking at? So we've gone in here. We're looking at this. We're like, what the fuck? All right. So we're with him all the way. He's walking around. He's nearly stepping on something. Oh my God, what's this? He looks down and then we see what he's looking at. He's looking there. So then we finally pull out wide to that other shot as a closing statement of this is where you are. Um, and then the great one will be, we'll cut to the great one talking to his skull. So that is that. Um, I might as well leave it open while I read the comments. Give you something nice to look at. Um, what have we got? What are people saying before I go? Um, the Soul of the Mountain is the working title so far. Um, the Froggy Bad Guy, yeah. Some of you saw that. What about a mountain-sized great one and a grasshopper-sized? Well, that was the original idea. It was Ryu versus Sagat, three times his size. I tried studying some milk car. He tended to focus on the silhouette. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. So that is that. Now, you guys have been with me for three hours. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the studio anime. We'll see. We could have, like, voice casting um, or also, like, having people who... But I don't want to put, like, rewards of getting your voice in the project. If, if the voice isn't right for the project, then... Um, I'm very, very fussy about voices. I like animation voices to be delivered, like projects like the Prince of Egypt, um, that kind of sincerity. Um, so um, what I'm going to do, uh, some of you can go, okay, it's fine, but those of you who want to support me, if you just want to hang around while I talk about the sponsor of my streams, which is the Real Animated Training Library, which is what what funds me now in order to continue doing all this. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about that and then I'm, I'm going to be on my way. Um, okay, so... Right, uh, the AMB Animation Real Animated Training Library is the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. Um, I've spent the last five years of my life building this. Look, you can see an early example of the Groundhopper here. Let's just, uh, just for fun. So there you see... You see what he looked like in that incarnation, right? And actually, um, yeah, so you can see. Actually, if you look here, um, if you go to the About section, you can see a bit of animation with the Groundhopper. Um, so you can see the AMB lady dancing away here. No, there he is. So there you can see some early test animation of him. Right, and there we go. Um, so there you go. There's a, there's some more groundhopper for you. It's been an all-out groundhopper day. You can even see like him being strangled here by the great one, um, kicking the great one in the back. But anyway, uh, the real animator training library is what I've spent the last five years of my life building. It's the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. If you click on that, you'll be taken to this page with a lot of great videos to show different archives within the training library. Uh, testimonial of people, some of them are in the chat today, um, and information about what the Real Animator Training Library is. So you can check that out and read that and watch those videos. 
If you click join now, you can also see this video with people's work, student work from the training library to give you an idea of the kind of results, uh, the very real results this place gives you. This place, um, as I say here, you're uh, industry professional. So we've got people working at Disney, uh, people who've worked at Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. You've also got people who have graduated at CalArts, uh, Don Bluth University, Full Sail, Animation Mentor, you name it. They're all joining this place uh, and you're getting the training that they desire for the price of a mid-range laptop. So it's extremely valuable. It's split into two different sections, training and edutainment. Training is really where the real foundation and real learning occurs, uh, which is why this place is called Real. You can save yourself a ton of money by getting a bundle uh, or you can buy each archive individually. You have these structured step-by-step -step, uh, courses where you follow along with the video. They're done in a literally every step of the way over the shoulder manner so that you can follow along and absorb what's being said rather than just copying the frame. Uh, you, you can do that with any video. If you just freeze frame it and go to the end, there's no point. So you've got basics archives where you learn the six laws of movement, which are timing, arcing, slowing in, slowing out, uh, pose to pose and straight ahead, solid drawing, follow through, overlap and drag. You then, uh, you learn a little bit of squash and stretch in here, but you really carry that over as with follow through, overlap and drag in the intermediate archives where you move on from... Um, bouncing balls pendulums and stick men to the flower sack where you learn about the six laws of life which are um, anticipation squash and stretch primary and secondary action exaggeration appeal and staging staging being what we did a little bit today in the storyboard uh, section the anatomy archive you learn every single bone of the human body in order to aid you with your construction and understanding of joint manipulation you also improve your hand, eye and drawing skills in this archive. Uh, the advanced archive, you move on from bowls and flower sacks and stick men and stick dogs onto drawing on model. You'll be doing turnarounds of heads and faces and full body characters all to model. You'll be learning to do uh, animation with characters uh, following a model of a cartoon dog, a cartoon peacock. You will then do your own uh, dialogue desk. So this is what you'll be doing in the advanced archive. The subsidiary animation lectures are like seminars that support everything. They are not step by step, but they're kind of like consolidatory lectures that kind of, if you're watching these things and you're wanting a bit of a break uh, and you've bought a bundle or something, you can watch these to kind of show you where all these things are being applied in real world scenarios. If you want real world scenarios and fun, uh, then the edutainment archive is less educational. It's it's entertainment as well as it is. Uh, it's a little bit like today's stream, actually, um, where you kind of like watch watch me do really high level stuff and talk away while I do it without really giving you any instruction what a lot of people call courses, but I don't. Uh, the how to animate your own film. You can watch each one of these videos, animation sessions, uh, drawing sessions, ask the animator, animation breakdowns. The how to animate your own film will give you the best il illustration. Over 56 live streams, you basically watch me animate a two minute film from scratch, design the characters, design the backgrounds and animate it to this high quality Disney feature level. Over 56 live streams. That whole thing took me the equivalent to six 24-hour days to make. So you get to see that. It's quite awesome. You can watch the whole little film here. You get to see uh, you get to see all that being made um, from start to finish. So it's a great archive, but just to remind you, it's not training. It's a lot of fun. It's very motivational, but those of you looking for that stuff, then the Edutainment Archive is there for you. Um, if you enjoyed today's stream, it's similar to the kind of stuff you'll find in the edutainment archive those of you looking for real training real learning real um you know something that'll really make a, a true transformation in your life uh rather than just inspiring you then the training archives are that okay so that is basically it thank you so much i really enjoyed doing today's live stream it was uh where are we just one more look so most of you are still here so thanks for hanging still around here, so thanks for hanging around just one so more look. just one more look uh, 
otherwise, you know, I would have pissed it off. It was a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> it was this, a lot of fun uh, doing this, two uh, these two panels, which we did on today's live stream. And the lighting isn't great. And the lighting isn't great, if but if I get more requests, I'll see how it goes. If I get more requests for me to do these traditional media live streams, today was a little bit of an experiment. The, 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 the double mic is on. The stream is staying up. Uh, but today was a little bit of an experiment just to see how this stream would go down. I have noticed that a lot of people have really enjoyed it. Um, so if that's the case, I may do a few more streams like this where I draw fun characters, AMB lady, maybe break down some characters from Google search, but on paper rather than digitally. So you can see that I'm fundamentally doing the same thing. And hopefully that'll put an end to the what software questions. Um, but that's it. Um, yeah, but I mean, this, this, this patch tunes, hopefully this was the quality of this wasn't the best, but hopefully you were able to see a lot more clearly, uh, what I did on this one than with the horse, because the angle on that in my hand was in the way and it was hard. Okay. Right. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me. It's been a lot of fun on today's live stream and I will see you on the next one and remember folks remember i've got a keep it real keep it real okay bye-bye <laughs>